Okay, man, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Now, now come on, now crank this motherfucker up. <laughs> And today, it is time to listen to the fantasy once again. It's time to get into the Final Fantasy trading card game. It is time to go to a new set. Opus 14 is out, and so we must review it. We must talk about the cards that are in the set, because this card game's good, y'all. And it, it's been a long time coming. Opus 14 was delayed for a little while because of COVID and because of production issues. But now it's here. We can finally get our hands on these pieces of cardboard that help constitute a game. And joining me, as always, to review these cards in this set, I'm joined by the RVA Returner's own John Schreiner. Hey, John, how's it going? Good, Gino. Glad to be here again, uh, as we do, to just kind of go over the beginning of the set. This time, uh, I feel like maybe I've had a little bit more time uh, to change my opinion. It it wasn't the same as, I think, last time. Weren't we firing, like, I did, like, three of these things in one weekend or something like that, I told you. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. you did, like, three in one weekend, and the set had been out for, like, a week, and so no one had touched – I don't think we had touched the cards yet. This time, I've had time to play some games. You've had time to play some games. There have been tournaments held with these cards, so we have – I think we have a good idea. They gave us the list early, too. Um, They did? They gave it to us at the beginning of the week instead of the end of the week. So, yeah, we've had some time to peruse, and uh, this will be, like, my third time – uh, and like three separate times over, you know, two weeks looking at these. And um, it's interesting because like my opinions on this will already be so updated compared to uh, my own little review I did. But Agreed. There are a yeah. number of cards that at first glance I was like, oh, that seems like it's too slow. And then I've played with them and I'm like, oh, no, it's it's plenty fast and plenty <laughs> devastating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, All but, right. But before we get into the set, a reminder, just normal housekeeping stuff. You can get in touch with the show at DeepListensPod on Twitter, DeepListens.Libson.com. We have our comment sections and DeepListensPodcast at gmail.com. Email into the site if you want to, and you can support the show on Patreon.com slash DeepListens, which will get you access to the Discord, where we've been having discussions about this card game for, for a good little while now. Um, people talking about some of the new cards and new decks. So, without further ado, Opus 14, uh, it's... Finishing off the first multi-element cycle, now we have cards of every multi-element combination, which means it's introducing fire, earth, wind, water, and lightning, ice to the fold. And in addition to that, it has a large FF14 focus, so a lot of Final Fantasy XIV cards and summons uh, kind of throughout. Any other big uh, call-outs, you think, John, for like things about Opus 14 in general? No, I think it's um yeah, it's very Final Fantasy fourteen focused. It's the last set in the dual element uh pairing, so we're probably not gonna have any more of the multi element cards after this. Um and then the other interesting thing about this is we did have a imbalance on legends this set. Um this is maybe the first set I think where uh, not every element has the same amount of legends. Because like the duels shook things up in a weird way. Yeah, there were only three duels this time instead of four, like the previous mm-hmm. two. Yeah, so it's an interesting set. Um, in general, I think the the power level on the set's pretty high, and um, and a lot of cards landed right where people thought they would be, which is really good. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. The uh, I would say that the last two or three sets have kind of disrupted much of the game in the way that mm-hmm. like Opus Five did way right back when. Like now there's a new bar. Yeah. It's probably like five, eight, eleven, and now I would say thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, yep. for sure. <clears throat> uh, so getting into it, let's start at fire. And for those who have not listened to one of these shows before, um, we generally go um, best card for an element, then an under a slightly overrated card, then an underrated card that we kind of like. And there will be times where you know we don't think anything's underrated, uh, overrated, or we don't think anything's particularly underrated, and we'll say so. But that's generally the format we go to. And actually, before we go into the review, John, do you have stuff to plug? You, the returners. Oh, of returners course, weekly, of course. All that stuff. <clears throat> yes, yes. So on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night at seven o'clock Eastern, uh, we have free online tournaments for the Final Fantasy TCG run through a third-party online program called Octagon. Um, but they're free to play, and you get to play with all kinds of players from all around, uh, from you know people who are just playing for the first time to people who are literally national champions and uh, everybody's just getting together and hanging out and playing cards. We give out prizes every week. Uh, They range from different donations from community members to just like a little prize wall that we have. 
Um, and then we also have the RV Returners podcast that we do, which right now uh, I've been moving lately, so we're a little bit of a hiatus, but I'm sure we'll be right back into that this month. Um, and you can find that on soundcloud.com slash RVA Returners. Dope. All right, so now let's get into, and I cannot emphasize enough, if you want to get good at this game, just go to the Returners Locals. Watch it, play in yes. it if you can. Um, uh, we it stream is... it weekly on twitch.tv slash RVA Snugsy, and there's all the links you need there as well. Yeah, if it is, if you want to get good at this game, if you want to play, if you're having a hard time finding people in your local area, the, the Returners Locals are great. There are prizes for those who do well, and also there's just a, a great community of people to play against and up your skills. So you'll learn a whole lot very quickly. I'll say that much. Okay, so without further ado, getting into fire. Um, what do we think is the best card in fire? Garland. For this set? Okay, you say Garland. I actually have a different opinion, but <laughs> okay, Garland. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I think Garland is the best. Uh, like, there's pound for pound the uh, the best individual card in fire this set, yeah. So he is a 4 CP uh, forward, 8,000 power, job knight, uh, mm-hmm. category Final Fantasy 1. Uh, if he has a few abilities, he has too many abilities. Uh, if Garland is dealt damage by a summoner ability, the damage becomes zero instead. When a backup is put from the field into the break zone, draw one card. There's no limit on that, so it can be your backups or your opponent's backups. And more um, than once per turn, which is really almost always these kinds of abilities have that limiter on them. Um, but nope, not this guy. And he has uh, an S ability, Flare. For just S and Dull, so no no CP cost on that. Choose one forward, break it, then your opponent selects one backup they control, put it into the break zone. So he'll just trigger his own draw ability with that too, and put your mm-hmm. opponent way behind. Um, so yeah, he does a hell of a lot of shit for 4 CP, and he's immune to all of the fire-based sweepers. Um, he is immune to a lot of damage-based, I mean all damage-based abilities. And backups going to the break zone is pretty common, so he's going to trigger all the time. And since he's in your deck, you can build your backup line to trigger him often yourself. So just plain good. Like, great yeah. great job, too. Knight uh, was... He also, he really fills in some synergies, like uh, the Fire Knight was always a strategy. We've talked about this so many times, you know? <laughs> um, that the Fire Knight, how good Gawain was, but how bad his fire targets were, and how you were really forcing yourself. Um, that he finally unlocks some of those cards, like Gawain, and I think Firewater Knights just, is uh, the door is blown wide open because of this guy. 100%, yeah. You used to be getting uh, Dual Element Steiner, Steiner. Yeah. Or, or like one like, rain if you were real spicy. That's when you were off the deep end. Either that, or you were getting the garland that like cared about princesses and like yeah. what are we? You, they nah, were all I bad. I can't believe that card's a legend. That, that's why they actually gave Garland another legend. They were like, "Oops, <laughs> that's our goof. <laughs> Oops, sorry, <laughs> our bad. Try this one." Yeah, uh, I think they nailed it this time. Yeah, one hundred percent. Super powerful. Uh, I'm just gonna go with Susanna, Lord of the Rebel. Um, uh, Interesting. Another... I thought for some reason you were just going to be a Gutsko simp here. Just like a big, big Gutsko fan. <laughs> I like Gutsko. He's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just don't think... Like, Susano is just, like, big and powerful. It's just 6 CP, uh, job primal, uh, 8K forward, uh, category 14. He has haste. And what, if a forward damaged by Susano, Lord of the Rebel, is put from the field into the break zone in the same, on the same turn, remove it from the game instead. And when Susano, Lord of the Rebel, enters the field, select one backup you control, you may put it into the break zone. When you do so, deal 9,000 damage to all the forwards other than Susano, Lord of the Rebel. Uh, so Susano, just a very powerful board wipe for very cheap and synergizes super well with Garland because you break your own mm-hmm. backup. Garland draws you a card. Garland's and immune Garland's to damage yeah. from Susano. And Susano has haste. So if you do a one-sided board wipe, you're immediately getting in them guts, which is pretty powerful for 6 CP. Um, Garland's probably attacking too because he just cleared the way and he's chilling there. Yeah, Exactly. So like Susano combos with a lot of cards that Fire already plays. Like there's a lot of powerful, like it opens up your backup line really nicely. Mm-hmm. And Fire up until now just kind of had Philia as the board wipe of choice. Now you can diversify and 6 CP versus 10 is a pretty, uh, wait, Philia is 8. eight. Sorry, mm-hmm. six versus eight is actually surprisingly big difference um, mm-hmm. in how it plays. Because of things like max hand size, especially in this game, and being limited on number of backups. Totally, yeah. Max hand size, like getting to four backups and then discarding one card is pretty different than needing mm-hmm. to get to four backups to and then discard two. It, it it feels very different, and you'll notice it when you play them. So I'm just going to go with Susano because it, it gives fire the almost the most uh, board wipes in the game. It's between fire and earth, definitely. Yep. Yeah, I mean, Suzanne's going to see tons of play. For sure. So what do we think is a slightly overrated fire card? Um, I think that, and we were talking about this, that 
all the primals are pretty good, but I actually think Ifrit's maybe a little bit overrated. Um, so Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno, he's another one of the primals. He's a 5 CP EX burst, 8K. Um, he's when Ifrit enter, enters the field, choose up to two forwards opponent controls, deal them 4,000 damage. And if your summon or an ability of a character you control deals damage to a forward, the damage increases by 1,000 instead. Um, so basically when he enters, he'll be doing five to both. And he does make it so that your summons or abilities uh, deal extra damage, which works for pumping fire things a little bit better than Katuna used to um, because it, it doesn't have to be cast, right? It could be EX, it could be anything. Um, but also it's uh, it's not necessarily only fire. So he can do that, like, you know, cute little combos like Moomba and things like that. Um, in general, it's just like, okay, this guy's an EX. He's a, a forward that has some removal on him, and he's a good rate. He's definitely efficient. I just think that um, there's actually so much going on in these fire decks, and even in the EX decks, that he sometimes is a little bit hard to fit in. And I even thought that he was just going to be like this automatic three of and all that stuff. And I often find that he's the one guy that I um, I want to cast the least. So maybe that's myself. I might have overrated him a little bit. Yeah, I think he's... He's fine. Like he's blazed yeah, he's not in bad. a lot of cases. Yeah, it's just, just that yeah. like fire is so stacked right now that it's hard to find spots for cards that are just fine. But honestly, even the blaze is just like, oh man, blaze is a backup that also can break to do seven. Like it's just like uh, much more relevant in some other ways. It's like, yeah, there's other good things to effort too, but it's just, um, it, it's interesting how much better blaze ends up just being all the time. Yep. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I mean, there, Fire, I have a hard time calling any of these cards overrated because so many of them are good. I think they're either great or unplayable, unfortunately, in like this. <laughs> yeah, there's not really too many that are like on the borderline. I guess the only card that like I can call out is like Ifrita, which seems mm-hmm. solid. I just think the Ifrit package used to be a control staple, and now I, I don't know that it's the creme de la creme anymore of, of mm-hmm. uh, removal. So Ifrita I think Amaterasu gets in the way there, right? It's like you're exactly. always going to run three of that, and so it makes the whole Ifrit package weird. Exactly. So Afrida's 5 CP, uh, card name Afrida, EX Burst, uh, and then its effect is choose one forward, deal, deal at 7,000 damage, search for one card name Afrida, and add it to your hand. So Afrida really wants to be in this Ifrit Afrida package with the 3 CP Afrida from, is it Opus 10? 8? Opus 8, yeah, Opus 8. Opus 8 Afrida um, with a bunch of Ifrits, but like summon based fire control the decks have not mm-hmm. really been the place to be recently and with cards like Susano and Philia and you don't necessarily need to be running 10 15 summons anymore mm-hmm. and if you are I don't know that you're going to use the effort package yeah I mean Susano wipes the board and then attacks it's like you know you're not really doing the uh the mill them strategy kill them and mill them as much anymore yeah and they're like doing it all with damage is tougher now that cards are mm-hmm. bigger um so what do we think is maybe an underrated fire card Geomancer. Hell yeah. That card's so fucking good. Geomancer, the backup 2CP Geomancer standard unit, uh, which means he's multiplayable. Uh, from Final Fantasy Explorers, it's just fire, tap, choose one forward, it gains this forward, cannot block until the end of turn. And it also has tap, put Geomancer into the break zone, choose one forward, it gains this forward, cannot block until the end of the turn. Um, this effect used to really be one of fire's strongest things back in, like, way back when. We're talking, like, Opus 2, 3, right? Um... Where, like, things like the Legend Tifa would be like, oh, when this attacks, choose something it can't block, right? We had a backup uh, Red Mage that said, like, choose something and it can't block. Um, Geomancer is just a better rate on that. Like, literally, that Red Mage was fire and one colorless in tap. Um, it's multiplayable. Just those are always good. You know, just, like, spammable 2CP backups. And uh, those effects, the fact that it also has, like, you could technically use it multiple times, or, like, it has this second way that's cheaper, so it really lends itself to, like, a dual element deck, right? And self-breaking. Um, right, so and self-breaking, which, again, is just good for free you know, backup slots, and also Garland, which we just talked about. Um, yeah, this Geomancer, it's, uh, when you use this ability, it's often going to be to win the game or to push through, like, something that should not be getting through. I think this is a really, really good card. 100%. And, like... Just to emphasize, like, the amount of power creep that's happening with this card, mm-hmm. uh, like you said, it's strictly better than Red Mage because it's cheaper to get the mm-hmm. permanent effect, the reusable uh, cannot block effect. And then there was a Opus 5 Ninja that you would dull, break, and then a forward can't block. Um, that turn, yeah. That turn, and that one was also playable. And this mm-hmm. one is both cards stapled together. And then there was Yasail, who was uh, target forward cannot block it was not multiplayable and oh, it can no, only do um, um, cost five or less cannot block yatsuyu, yeah i'm oh, sorry yatsuyu yeah um 
Also Sorry, playable. I was looking at you, Sale. No, it's um, okay. Yeah, she, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a also very good. Proved itself. That's for sure. Yeah, so like this card is just better than all three of those cards, and it is multiples of them stapled together. So right, mm-hmm. very powerful. Um, so for me, I'm gonna go with Zenos. I don't know that it's. I just haven't seen anyone build around it yet. I don't know I if have, people already I have. have. <laughs> Let's say I'm ashamed to load on Octagon, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, um, maybe man, we might be there. We might be there. You can build a pretty comprehensive Final Fantasy 14 deck in Earth and Fire. Yeah, so Zenos is five CP for a nine K, which is the going rate. Uh, job general, um, category 14, and Decidia Final Fantasy. One day they'll make a Decidia Matters card. But until then... Could build um, Materia or Spiritus, you know? Yeah, sure, totally. They, there's so many at this point. It's weird that mm-hmm. Mobius gets to have synergies, but Decidia doesn't. But mm-hmm. that's neither here nor there. Uh, when Xenos enters the field, reveal the top five cards of your deck. Add up to two category 14 forwards among them to your hand. Put the rest of the cards into the break zone. When Xenos attacks, all the category 14 forwards you control gain haste until end of turn. Uh, Cat 14 just has a ton of powerful um, forwards at this point. All like the Susano. <laughs> like Susano. <laughs> yeah. um, in this set, I mean, there's Nail. Uh, there's the Generals from Opus 8. Mm-hmm. Um, the Scions. The Scions are all Category 14. And yeah, PN. Uh, yeah, all, yeah, PN. Stuff, like, yeah. All that stuff. Like, there, I think Lots you of can, standard units. Loads of standard units. For sure. Like, I think you can make an Oops All 14 deck pretty easily mm-hmm. with only playing good cards um and we'll see if you can't quite get there maybe you can't but uh pay five draw two is yeah, an absurd good. rate for um, for like uh, also a 9k body <laughs> also a 9k body also, also just the haste sticky board. haste thing yeah yeah uh, i think yeah i agree that he's probably underrated yeah so i think it, like we should try it maybe it won't get there but i think that he's close enough on rate and like Mm-hmm. they don't usually give you a card that's capable of drawing two like forwards that are capable of drawing two cards when they right. etb um, very rarely like fusoya legend yeah and usually when they exist like that they force barring cost reduction forced you to discard so you couldn't play them uh and end up up a card mm-hmm. um this card you can um like nail you always had to pay four and then discard without any sort of cost reduction so you'd end up you know card from your hand for nail and then you discarded one and then you refill with two him you can actually end up up a card in the exchange if you just tap all backups so we'll see um moving on to ice what do we think is the best card in ice chivalry yeah chivalry is so good i agree yeah uh, chivalry is very very strong it's the best ice summon hands down and ice normally does not get good summons no um so chivalry is a 2 cp ex burst which is always great a uh, Waff summon, actually, just kind of cool. Uh, like a Frida. EX burst, choose one forward until the end of the turn. He gains plus 3,000 power. And when a forward opponent controls is put from the field into the break zone on the same turn that the chosen forward has dealt it damage, your opponent discards one card from their hand. Um, so basically, it's a combat trick for ice that is a really, really good rate uh, for 3,000 power for two, plus the fact that it gets a discard. Really strong card. Yeah, and this card, like... The ordinary case, plus 3,000 is enough to win almost any combat that Mm -hmm. you would enter willingly. Um, And it also has this combo mode, like this second mode in Ice Fire specifically, for the most part, and Ice Wind, where if you, you know, play Susano, Susano trigger on the stack, Chivalry it, and Mm -hmm. then every card it kills, your opponent discards a card, or same thing with Philia. Um, you can also do it with, like... Uh, so Chivalry actually does not combo with Susano because Susano RFG... Oh, RFG, sorry. It works with yeah. Philia. But yes, yes, yes. Works with Philia, works with... Worth mentioning, uh, sorry. <laughs> Fina. Yes. Yeah, Fina no, it works with it. a lot of those kinds of things. Um, it, it's, it's really a good card. The fact that it becomes... Uh, like, Ice's biggest weakness, I would say, is that all of its guys are really under what the normal curve would be. Um, they're just a little bit weaker. It's always been the case, right? They, they've always been the color that really needs Duke Lark just to stick, you know, uh, their forwards to the table. So Chivalry takes, you know, really covers their weakness and also just is so much synergy with the things they're trying to do. It's a really good card. Yep. And I mean, I think I'll just pick another card. I think Chivalry is going to prove to be the one. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just going to see the most play, I think. Yeah. But, uh, picking another card, I'm going to go Shiva, Lady of Frost. Yeah, she's um, very strong. Just very strong. Uh, 5 CP, 9K, uh, Job Primal, Category 14. You're going to hear Job Primal, Category 14, a lot. <laughs> um, and 
Shiva's ability is uh, you cannot play Shiva Lady of Frost or card name you sail when, the, when in control of other, uh, either character. So spoilers for FF14. Uh, when Shiva Lady of Frost enters the field, choose one character opponent controls, dull it, and then freeze all the forwards opponent controls. And then you can put three backups into the break zone, remove Shiva Lady of Frost in the game, then play Shiva Lady of Frost onto the field. So Shiva has, you know, it's going to freeze down your opponent's board. You're probably going to remove a blocker out of the way. Um, she is on rate already pretty strong and then just breaking three backups to flicker Shiva, um, to get that dull and freeze again. Um, she just does a whole lot of powerful things all at once. And obviously, again, if you have Garland in play, draw three cards off of Shiva is gross. Mm -hmm. Um, and just like getting that repeated effect, like she can dodge removal, she can block and then flicker. Like there's a bunch of tricky things you can do with her secondary ability. Yeah, I think that this card's really good. Uh, this is actually one that I underrated a little bit, and then the very first time I saw it played, I was like, well, never mind. You yeah. know, it's like, it's one of those, um, oh, is this really enough? Like, yeah, just the giving your backups more action, just giving yourself another option is always so strong. And it's essentially, you know, quote-unquote free. Like, obviously it's not, right? But, but it's an option, turn, like... When your backups are already expended, and if you maybe weren't planning to use them again, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it certainly is free, you know. 100%. So what do you think is an overrated ice card? An overrated ice card? I think I'm going to say, unfortunately, and I love Final Fantasy VI so much, I'm going to say Kefka a little bit here. Uh, people are really high on the Kefka backup. It's 3 CP EX versus Kefka backup to the point where I've heard people be like, is FF6 mono ice back? No. Um, and it's like when Kafka enters the field, uh, choose one forward opponent controls, dull it, and then he can tap to choose one forward, dull it, and freeze it. You can only use his ability if you control five or more ice backups, so basically only if you have full backups and ice. And I'll tell you what, if you have five ice backups and Kafka's down there, he is definitely really good, <laughs> like a crazy good dull ability. Um, I just think that currently, especially what I've been seeing in the last two weeks, like everything's just going so quick right now. Um I don't know that Ice gets away with just building the five and then, you know, playing like normal fair things. Yeah, once um, upon a we'll time you see. could you could count on a gentleman's game yeah. to where you got to five backups and then this guy Kafka might be one of the strongest cards if you get to five backups in terms of he's, like a he's backup. He's only mono though. That's the thing, right? Cuz like thing. Ice like Ice Wind is so strong. Ice Fire is pretty strong. And now uh you know Ice Lightning is coming to the table. Uh, Earth Ice is proven. It's like Okay, and Mono Ice has really been struggling for a while, so I'm not sure. Exactly. Like, you you have to commit to this deck-building concession to be mm -hmm. Mono Ice, and once you do that, he's absurd in that specific deck, but you've powered down the rest of your deck to such an extent he has to do way too much work mm -hmm. to make up for it, and I agree. Um, I, like, slow controlling Ice has not been a thing for, like, a year, I think, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't think he does it. I don't think he's enough to bring it back. Um, so for me, an overrated card in ice. I mean, I think I'm just going to have to agree with Kefka because I don't see a lot of other cards that are getting a lot of plaudits. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'll just say Gilgamesh because I, I, I've seen him played. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I don't think he's bad. Uh, so this new Gilgamesh, he's 3 CP, 7K, uh, job winged one. Uh, he's FF. Category FFBE, um, and then his abilities are very long. Uh, if you have three or more different elements among cards in your break zone, Gilgamesh gains plus 1,000 power, haste, and first strike. Uh, if you have seven or more, he also gains brave, and he can attack up to three times in the same turn. And then when he attacks, choose one character. If you have five or more elements in your break zone, dull it and freeze it. So he basically rewards you for going full six color or more. Six color plus dark or light. Um and he's a big payoff for that. My concern is that in the current game, you have to contort your deck pretty hard to do that. Um, and to play full six elements, like there are decks that can do it, but the speed at which you can fill your break zone with that many elements, especially the dark or the light, because you're going to need those cards to probably die organically or get milled over um, to maximize his potential. I think you need to have three or more to get him to where you're even comfortable. I mean, obviously, you're not going to play him if you don't if you're two mm -hmm. elements. Um, if you're three elements, I don't think he's good enough. Like three CP, haste, first strike, eight K. It's good, but it's not like 
broken, and mm-hmm. I think we're in the land where mostly you're playing broken cards. Once you get to five, he's very interesting. Um, but again, then you're in a very specific kind of deck if you're getting to five. Um, and I think if you're getting to five, you're getting to seven with him. So I think that this is a card that if in the future we end up with multiple, like instead of just dual elements, we get tri element or quad element or heaven forbid some card that's all six elements. This guy gets bonkers. Like if you only have to get one card into the break zone or two cards into the break zone, yeah. it's absurd. Um, but for right now, you need to work pretty hard to get him to five or seven. Um, and I think that it might just prove to be too much work. But I've seen you play a deck that that uses this, so I'm. How do you feel? Do you I agree look. Or? I had. Hey, I had you scared of this guy at at, at one point in time. You did. <laughs> um, he was a card that I honestly underrated. Um, and I had him played against me, and ignoring the seven count, like just the three and the five was actually got pretty frustrating pretty fast because um. He ends up doing that, you know, the turn he comes down. So he ends up being like a uh, almost good for the same reasons that White Tiger is good, where it's like sometimes you just play him to push through that turn. And, you know, because you push through that turn, he'll probably stick because that's like two different kinds of pressure, right? Whoever you pushed through and then also him that they have to deal with. Um, And so he ends up being this guy that's like, oh, these other forwards that have no business getting through can help because I can come in and and move someone out of the way. Um, Yeah, just like he's not... I think, you know, I got fixated maybe on the seven where you can attack three times because that's like the most exciting part. Yeah, that's, um, that's like he's killing you by himself. That's like absurd, right? But yeah, I think that um, he actually ends up just being pretty decent in, in some decks that are rainbow for other reasons, if that, you know, makes sense. Yeah, if you're a Tiro deck. I don't think you can build deck, around him. I don't think he's that good. Yeah. Yeah, if you're already doing that sort of stuff. He can sometimes fit in. Um, I think that that's good. But he reads like he should be the centerpiece of your deck, and I think if you're going that hard, you're probably trying too hard. Mm -hmm. He's piggybacking on other cards being good and making multicolor stuff ridiculous. I mean, he certainly is, like, for the build-around cost that he has, he definitely doesn't, like, always get to do his thing, not even close. So it's, like, a little bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes he comes down and they just, you know, kill him with an Odin or something. Mm -hmm, It's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, damn. Mm -hmm, (laughs) Mm-hmm. Or, you know, they misdragon him in combat, and he's a 7 cat. Yeah. Um, all right, so what do we think is an underrated ice card? Uh, good King Mogglemog, the 12th. Yep, yeah, good King Mogglemog, man. I, I shat on him, everybody shat on him. You know, somebody sold my roommate a card, a foil copy of it for a dollar, laughing all the way. And I'll tell you what, I uh, certainly didn't win the first game I played against this card. Uh, <laughs> so... So Good King Mago Mago 12 is a primal, of course, category 14, 4 CP ice card. Uh, when Good King Mago Mago 12 is put from the field to the break zone, you may discard two cards. If you do, return Good King Mago Mago 12 to your hand, which is all well and good. But why would I want to do that? Well, because at the end of each of your turns, you reveal the top three cards of your deck. You play up to one card named Moogle 14 or any job Moogle of cost three or less among them onto the field and return the other cards to the bottom of your deck in any order. Um, so the dream with this guy is you just win will slam it onto the table turn one, and then you just start playing free backups, and some of them tutor things, uh, at the end of every turn, and it can get out of hand pretty quick. It's a lot yep. of free value. Yeah, speaking of ways to get, like, four, like, six or seven element decks, Good King Moggle Mog is a good way to do it. Like, he's just generating free CP. Um, now it does contor- ask you to contort your deck in a pretty specific way. Like you have mm. to play basically all Moogle backups and you might even have to play some of the Moogle forwards that are not so great. And there aren't necessarily that many Moogles that self break to allow you to keep getting value after turn five of good King Moggle Mog staying in play, but just getting that much extra CP will accrue a, a significant advantage over the course of a game and it yeah. can swing a game. And there's definitely things that, like, you play with it to take advantage of it, right? Like, the new Shiva that we were just talking about breaks through those Moogle backups, right? Freeze it up yeah. a little bit. Um, the, like, there's, like, the Sarah that when she attacks, she untaps all the Moogles, and then she also has this action ability. You can just use your extra backups in your hand. So it's, like, the deck plays, like, 20 backups, and it's not, you know, super bad because there aren't really any Moogle forwards besides there's only two of them that um, that this card can play. So this card is one of those things where it's like, yeah, you got to build a little crazy to play right now, but he's really, really good if you get him early and he gets to do the thing. And um, this card, just like Gilgamesh that we were talking about before, 
Um, the more Moogles that come out, this card just gets absurd. Yeah, this is so like if you were okay with playing like um, Agrius on turn one, like the 60 yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He feels like, a lot like that. He's just like an engine all by himself that just accrues this value. Yeah, if you were cool with that, if you could live with that, then you can probably live with Good King Mogamog. Do you know, I'm going to ask you the same thing, kind of like how you asked me with the Gilgamesh. Um, you told me that you thought, like, every Primal had legs except this guy. And then it was the first game we played. What did you think after the first game? I think he has legs. I I just worry. Like, he's very small. Yeah. Uh, he's a 7K. Right, So yeah, see if your opponent kills him on turn one, like, if he gets to live, <laughs> oh, sure. um, yeah. you're, you're in driver's seat. If he dies uh, before you can end your turn... Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you can recycle him back to your hand, but you're so far behind because you, um, you know, discarded two cards to do this. You paid two to, you paid four to play him and then you discarded. I think he'll be the only card in your hand, depending on whether you went first or second. Mm-hmm. Um, so in that position, I don't, I don't know. It really depends on the amount of removal that people are playing that can get him on turn one. Yeah. Um, or two. I mean, I think if you get one backup off of him, it's okay, but not amazing. Um, yeah. if you can get two or more, I think he's absurd. I think so, if you get the one, if you get one of the ones that's like three CP but gets you another card though, he's just like a totally neutral. Yep, he's totally free at that yeah. point, similar yeah. to like Agrius uh, mm-hmm. in a lot of cases. So I, I love that this deck, this will open up a deck. I think that there will be a good King Mogulmog deck. I think the uh, whether it will be A tier, B tier, or C tier really depends on how hateful the meta is for killing him early. Mm -hmm. Um, or killing him one turn after like if he's gonna die really early really often i don't love it or if you you know it proves that it's hard to get him into your hand early Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because like unlike decks like agrius um searching for him with a searcher backup is not really a thing um and there's not a good searcher forward Uh, for him i mean sure it is the the same (laughs) the same way that people search agrius most of the time there's an exact equivalent to merrill in a sale if you really wanted well, to go that way I yeah mean, i mean i know that you, you can it's weird with shiva, shiva and then it's right but still not it's a just, it like, does it does exist yeah it totally exists so, ju- like you're you, yep. there's tension going yeah yeah, yeah. On this card there's a forward you, that searches for him too this is a little good enough. but yeah. if you if you were like really like i think that if the engine proves to be good enough yeah people definitely make sure they can get him I think so. I think it's just a little bit more tension to getting yeah. him than oh, yeah, for sure, for Agrius. Sure. Agrius wanted the four CP backups to begin with, and mm-hmm. it just all kind of mm-hmm. melted together real nice. Good King Moggle Mog, I think, is going to run into some issues. But every single Moogle that gets printed from here on out gets better because he exists, yes. and he gets It is better. a little weird. It's like maybe the first case where you really want him to have two jobs because it's like there are things that search Moogles, and they just don't get this card. It's like, it's like kind of weird because he's a primal. Yeah, um, totally. Which is definitely a moment that you experience. You're like, oh, yeah, this this Moogle synergy will work with him, right? And it's like, oh, oops, nope, yeah. So, um, But, yeah, that, that's my pick. Yeah, totally. And I think that this is a card that every Moogle that you see, you'll have to reassemble the Moogle deck, yep. the Good King Mogulmog <laughs> deck, and see, yeah. oh, is it over the edge now? <laughs> He's one of those, dude. And I, I like that. I want there to be more and more of those types of scenarios. Yeah. Look, every time a Chocobo gets printed, you have to put the Chocobo deck back together and be like, is this it? Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, underrated card in ice. I mean, it, people love Lugay, right? Are people playing Lugay yet? Can um, I say he's underrated. I, I don't know. I haven't seen uh, anybody play it yet besides you, but I also didn't see many ice. I, I actually didn't play against any ice matchups at local yesterday, and that's really the only time I saw any ice cards um, by themselves or, or with. I guess maybe there was some fire ice stuff going on, but yeah, no, I haven't seen much Lugay yet. I mean, it seems like everybody was pretty excited about him when we saw it. Um, myself like included, it. but even I haven't really slipped him into a deck yet. Although I did enjoy what um, what he was doing when I saw him in action when we played today. So I'm going to say Lugay then, uh, just to give it a shout out, open up some people's head spaces. It's a 2CP backup, uh, category six, uh, category sorry four, mm-hmm. uh, doc, job doctor. Uh, when Lugay enters your field, uh, when a forward enters your field, you may remove Lugay from the game. If you do mm-hmm. so, that forward gains plus 2,000 power and brave. This effect does not end at end of turn. So Lugay is kind of an enchantment, like from Magic, if you've uh, ever played Magic the Gathering. He's a, like, once you play a forward, you can basically get Lugay to modify them, improve them permanently. So he allows certain forwards that... Uh, are constrained by their size to mm-hmm. get around that sizing constraint permanently. Um, and he can give Brave to cards that shouldn't have Brave. Now, the most potent 
combo, I think, is Luge plus some sort of first striker. Mm -hmm. Just a big first striker, give it plus 2,000 power and brave. Now, first strike in this game is very powerful on defense because your opponent just cannot swing into a brave first striker a lot of times if they're big enough. Like, you Mm -hmm. can block their entire board without combat damage happening to your forward, so it just gets to block their whole board. Um, So that's an obvious application. Um, I think that there are a lot of cards that were just a little bit outsized but were powerful, and Ice is, like, the biggest victim of this a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, another good combo with Luge if you have Titan, like the we'll talk about it in a bit. The mm-hmm. Earth, uh, Earth Primal. So like anything that really cares about sizing, Luge is going to come in and help them out. I I don't think that you're going to want to do like necessarily the uh, Lightning Ramza that cares about sizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know that you want to do the Lightning Gilgamesh that you know cares about mm-hmm. sizing. But some of these cards just get a lot better with Luge. And I think that Luge, just being a 2CP backup, the cost to play him is so low, and he basically self-breaks for you. So uh, you can play multiples of him in in the same game and have, have a great success with it. So he opens up a lot of cool design space, and I, I want to see what people do with it. Yeah, he's very unique for sure. Yeah, nothing like it before. Mm-hmm. Um, so moving on to Wind, what do we think is the best Wind card? Bismarck, Lord of the Mists. <laughs> Fuck yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, all right, well, we don't sound like a broken record yet. Bismarck is a 5CP, Category Primal, <laughs> or sorry, Job Primal, Category 14, uh, 9K. When a character is returned from the field to its owner's hand, draw one card. This effect will trigger only once per turn. At the end of each of your turns, choose up to one wind character you control, return it to its owner's hand, and dull one active wind forward, choose one forward, deal it 2,000 damage. Uh, this guy just is like, uh, I'm just going to call him the mini looper. Because that's what he's doing is he's just kind of like at all these little effects, all of these like these beyonds, these ashes, you know, like all the stormy type stuff that we've already been doing. Um, yeah, he only does like the one trigger when a character's return to draw the card, but it's still like you're taking advantage of that almost every turn with repeatable effects like Althaying Lock or Meoning Your Light, you know, things like that um, mm-hmm. that we've already seen be extremely effective. Um, and I think this card is just the value all over it, the value printed all over it. And, I mean, the fact that the dull one active win forward is an activated ability on him mm-hmm. means things that have summoning sickness, you just dull them to deal 2,000 damage. He can do that the turn he comes into play. Mm-hmm. Um, he can assemble a lot of damage very quickly with that ability. Yeah. And, uh, like, he's drawing you extra cards, and this is the element that most wants to just bounce things for value. Mm-hmm. Like, getting a free Mion every turn is what's yeah. happening here. Mm-hmm. Messed up. Um, so yeah, Bismarck, I agree with you 100%. I don't think there's another card that's like, I, I mean, there are other cards that are good. I don't think there's another card really competing for best win card. Mm -hmm. Um, what do we think is an under, an overrated win card? An overrated win card. Um, hmm. I can't say that because it's actually pretty good. (laughs) I can't say that because it's actually pretty good. Uh, I'm going to say Sin, actually. I think that people are pretty excited about Sin. I just don't think we can get away with playing Sin these days. I think that Sin is uh, the, just he's a real slow kind of guy. So Sin's a 4CP, Category 10, 8K. During your opponent's turn, the forwards opponent controls cannot use action abilities. And then Wind Wind and 2, choose one auto ability, cancel its effect. Um, it's really crazy to have a guy who has a repeatable ability to cancel an effect. But it's going to cost you 4CP every time. And Sin has like no ETB and he's kind of like this weird neutral play, right? Mm-hmm. If four CP eight Ks that, Oh my goodness. Did you hear that? That was, that was crazy loud. Thunder Is that lightning? Happened outside. Yeah. Wow. That was nuts. Um, sorry. It's fine. Uh, sin, sin is, uh, if four CP eight Ks that stopped our opponent from using action abilities, were good. The emperor would see play. Um, and it's only during your opponent's turn. And, the most egregious action ability activator right now is probably Stern Leonis, and he's just going to do it on your turn. So I think that Sin just misses the mark. Yeah, uh, I, I'm going to kind of, again, That's sorry, fair. Yeah, no, go you. ahead. Hey, that's like, all right. Sim, I, I just don't Great like minds, et cetera. Four, four CP neutral plays that don't... It's not crippling, this effect. Mm-hmm. Like it, People were very excited about Sid Rendell um, last set. Mm-hmm. You know, 4 CP 6K stops all basically ETB effects on your opponent's side uh, for forwards. And that just, 
it wasn't good enough um, for the most part. And I think that that was more hamstringing than what Sin does. Now, mm -hmm. Sin has this secondary ability that uh, I think is very strong. It's cool to have access to it. But again, having 4 CP up all the time, I think you need this to kind of... It's more of a water wind card than just a wind card, which is good because yeah. water wind is kind of the 10 uh, elements. But uh, you need to have extra cards. Um, and if you have extra cards... Sin can allow you to lock your opponent down pretty strong. But if you don't have that extra fuel to burn all the time, um, he's just not good enough. He's not going to do enough. Um, so what do we think is an underrated win card? Oh, man, dude. I, well, it's another primal for me. So yeah. I, it's my fault. I was very low on Garuda, Lady of the Vortex. She's a 60p 9k primal, category 14. When Garuda, Lady of the Vortex, enters the field, choose one forward to power 9,000 or more opponent controls, break it. When a forward to power 9,000 or more of your opponent enters the field, draw one card. Um, at first, I was like, okay, so what? We have so many things in wind that just, like, kill a forward of 9,000 power or more. Like, so what? Whatever, right? Who cares? Um, well, it turns out that uh, this is going to... There's, like, everything, everything running around right now has got 9,000, right? So it removes all kinds of problematic guys. Uh, and then its second ability basically says that most of the cards that your opponent would play to deal with Garuda are at least going to draw you this extra card, right? And if it's not, they pretty much can't, like, continue on without giving you some kind of passive advantage. Also, just a 9k. Also, the fact that uh, it just works really well in the wind deck with the primal activating backups and you're doing Bismarck stuff anyway. Um, Garuda just has been better than I thought it would be every time I've seen it so far. So yeah. I underrated this card for sure. Agreed. Um, Garuda's very strong. Uh, all the, all the primals. If it says primal in its job, yep. mm -hmm. look at it again if you didn't <laughs> think it was good. Um, I'm gonna go with, <laughs> I'm torn. I, my heart wants to say Cacturoni, but I can't. Uh, so he's got cute. the great, he's got the best look. Yeah. He does. Uh, I like White Mage backup. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Two CP common, uh, for those who've listened before. I love me some Storm cards and this White Ooh, Mage, stuff, uh, yeah continues down that down that uh excellent path uh when might mage enters the field choose up to two backups of an element other than wind you control activate them so if you're building a storm deck you're probably using tilica you're probably using earth and wind and white mage will come down and activate your tiro and your tilica or your mm -hmm. tilica and your other thing um so this white mage is a little bit awkward because sometimes you'll end up with just more wind backups than other element backups and then you won't get the full value out of it but I think that it's an interesting design for Storm. It, I think it's going to find homes in Earth, uh, Wind, or Wind, uh, Ice, or Earth, Wind, Ice. You can do all three. Um, yeah. The only thing is it can't fit in Mono Wind. Yes, uh, and Mono Wind, actually, honestly, with the way that some of these Wind cards look in this set, um, could be making a pretty strong return. I, I have built Mono Wind Storm. I did not mm -hmm. play it while we were <laughs> testing, but yep, I think yeah. you can totally do that yeah. now. Um. So, moving on to Earth, what do we think is the best Earth card, and why is it either Cloud or Titan? Oh, God, dude. I mean, Earth's just got so many good, cool cards. This set. And I say that, and it's actually, it's just like four. But, you know, it's like, man, they're so good, though. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say Cloud, so you can say Titan, man. So, uh, Cloud is a 4CP um, soldier. Of course, he's Category 7, but he's also Dissidia Final Fantasy, but also his art is, like, unique. So, I don't know why it's Dissidia Final Fantasy, but whatever. Um, he's an 8,000 power forward, and it's if your opponent controls any forwards, Cloud gains plus 2,000 power. And when Cloud attacks, choose one forward, it gains, if possible, this forward must block until the end of the turn. But the bread and butter of Cloud is a Cloud has discard one Category 7 card. And until the end of the turn, Cloud gains plus 1,000 power, and Cloud cannot be chosen by your opponent's abilities. This is hands down the most accessible and uh, most on rate, just like cheapest, most efficient way to and it like say no nope, my guy can't they, they cancel an ability like no 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 sorry nope i think that will just protect cloud by discarding half my deck is a viable card for this uh he just it really messes up the field he warps uh the board for sure when he's on the table yeah he's huge he gets to pick who he wants to fight a lot of the time um which is cool with his uh cross slash art he's just like you <laughs> Yeah, you're paralyzed. I'm taking you out. <laughs> and then, yeah, he usually doesn't pick somebody who's going to get him, you know? <laughs> no, no, he doesn't pick fair fights. Yeah. Um, and like you said, it's very easy to build a, a deck with 
fifty percent or more seven cards. So yeah, um, as long as your opponent has cards in hand and cloud in play, assume that that ability is live. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, did totally good. And then my pick, I'm gonna go with Titan Lord of Crags. Uh, he's seven CP for a nine K job. Wouldn't you know it? It's primal. Um, category 14. Uh, mm-hmm. When Titan Lord of Crags enters the field, break all forwards with power less than Titan Lord of Crags. When five or more forwards are put from the field in the break zone by this effect, Titan Lord of Crags deals your opponent one point of damage. You're probably not going to deal your opponent one point of damage all that often, but uh, he's, again, kind of a one-sided board wipe. Uh, you're probably, in this current game, going to need to actually pump him a little bit to mm-hmm. get your opponent's whole board or most of their board. Uh, because there are just so many 9Ks and bigger. But having it be straight break instead of damage is pretty useful because there's a lot of, like, prevent damage effects running around. Yeah, even just, like, breaking, like, two guys with this, it's just, like, a really good rate for a 9K that's on your field. Um, and something that has to be mentioned with all these primals, like, every single one of these primals really gets this boost from there's, like, a backup in every single color that says that when the primal of that color enters the field, you, re- like, activate the backup, which kind of makes them you know, like a little bit discounted. It's like a rebate, but also they have the tap ability that usually kind of like works with one of the primal's abilities. So um, the one in wind lets you like activate a forward. So of course that's great for Bismarck, right? Yeah. Um, the earth one lets you just tap it and give a forward 1000 power. So what's cool is Titan kind of comes with like this almost built in way um, to help to make get, sure that he gets yeah. there. Yeah. And the kobolds, all of those are standard units. So it's nice because they're multiplayable. Like, the Amal Jaw one's really good, too. That's honestly where uh, Ifrit is strongest, is if you have a lot of those backups out, because they go from being, like, 1K pings to 2K pings on yeah, backups. That scales so. super well. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, er, I would say that every one of these uh, primals has at least one. Um, like, the these special backups, the mm-hmm. uh, common primal backups, they are the, the backups, the standard units that care about primals. Mm-hmm. They tend to directly support one of the primals, and not care so much about the other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them will care about both, like, you know, or at least they'll be useful for both of them. Um, mm-hmm. But definitely Titan plus Kobold is going to be – that's how you play it. I don't yeah. think you're going to play one without the other. Um, yeah, so what do we think is an overrated Earth card? An overrated Earth card. Um, I'm going to say – and I, I kind of hate saying this a little bit. It's going to be Katone. Um I'm a little bit upset I'm saying this because I really highly rated this card. I really like this card, um, which is, I guess, why I'm saying it's overrated because I rated it very highly. Uh, I think it's fine as a ninja. I just think it's in the wrong color for the fact that it's a ninja to matter. So I think this ends up being like um, more of a mono earth card. So Katoni's a 2 CP uh, earth backup job ninja category FFB. And when she enters the field, you choose one character, and during this turn, it cannot attack or block, and it cannot use action abilities. And her S ability, Dream Within a Dream, is really what I like the most about her. Of course, it's choose one forward, deal it 4,000 damage, and you may pay one Earth CP. And when you do, you can use a special ability again without paying the cost. Um, so when I first read this, I was like, okay, man, I can like use another copy of this backup. And I can just start nuking things for like, you know, like, oh, 4K here, 4K there, you know, it's, wow, it's a total of like 16,000 damage. Um, But when you look at it realistically, it's like, well, turns out uh, 8K sometimes doesn't even kill a guy. So like he had to use like three of those packets to kill like one bigger threat. And um, I don't know, like in practice, it just didn't seem nearly as good. Yeah, so Katone, I, I wish... She was good enough in ninjas, and she mm-hmm. is. Like I would play for, I've played four element ninjas. They're yeah. solid. Um, I just think that the issue right now is that there are too many good sweepers that people are playing main deck for ninjas. Mm-hmm. Um, ninjas really ask the question: Are your opponents expecting a long fair game, and can you uh, stick them with a knife before they realize what's up? <laughs> um, and right now, like the most popular decks I've seen, a lot of them have three Susano. Sometimes Philia's too. Mm-hmm. A lot of Titan running around. Uh, Fina, Bismarck, just like execute your ninjas for free. Yeah. Um, Shiva will lock them down. Like all the primals, basically, just outclass your ninjas by themselves. Like you're building this engine where all of your cards are synergistic and they're all relying on edge. And like your opponent can just play one of these primals just raw with no no backup, no support, and it will outclass your entire deck. And so when that happens, Katone is just not enough. Yeah. Um, 
and then she's hurting your consistency because Earth is not the ninja element. Um, so you have to screw up your dex elements just to make her work at all. Um, but when you do, like, I have definitely played Katone and then removed a blocker and gotten in for lethal. Like, that is, that dream lives. But I think that the deck that she goes into, like you said, it's just not well positioned. And then you're thinking about dream within a dream. And, I mean, you can get a ton of activations of that card in Mono mm-hmm. Earth. And Mono Earth is the element most positioned to use an S ability over and over and over again. This is true. So that, I think, bolsters it a little bit more. But her first ability then is kind of depowered, right? Because mm-hmm. most of the mono, mono Earth decks that are recycling S abilities are not trying to get across that last point of damage via right. this first ability. So she's kind of weird. I, she might end up in a home that's not very good or homeless. Um, but I think Dream Within a Dream is at least powerful enough to take a look at. Like turning your 2CP backup into a potential board wipe on demand. Mm-hmm. Like most, most backups don't have that potential at 2CP. Yeah. So she might just be a generic backup that you play. But she, mm-hmm. since it's an S, you want to play like three. So it's a tough spot. Just awkward. A lot of stuff that's just a little awkward. Just a little awkward. Yeah, exactly. Um. So for me, I mean, I, I can't really... I kind of agree with Katone because I I love ninjas, but I just couldn't make it work. Mm-hmm. Um. I don't really see another card that I think is overrated in Earth. Like, most of the stuff is either very good or unplayable. I guess, um, I don't love... Uh, what are you going to say? I was going to say, or just, like, as advertised. Just, like, spot on. Like, it does the thing. And it's one situation. Like, like uh, cards like Mon and Hojo feel like that, where it's just, like, nobody thought they would ever do anything other than exactly what they do. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. I was going to say Noctis or Hojo, but, like, mm-hmm. they do exactly what they do in the exact deck that they come in. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, so, like, I guess I'll go with Hojo just because it's such a specific card. It's Mm -hmm. when Hojo, so 4CP backup, um, when Hojo enters the field, choose one forward, you control, remove from the game. When you do so, choose one forward in your break zone with a cost inferior to that of the remove forward, play it onto the field. You have to be doing one of the kind of like lightning earth, your uh, character's costs are fake sort of decks. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're breaking a Soya and then playing a real card, breaking a 9CP Shantoto in your Rampir deck, um, and then playing a real card, breaking a Cane, like, Hojo fits in those sorts of decks, and I just think that those decks are kind of poorly positioned right now. Um, but then, you know, there's also this new card, Mont Leonsis, Leonis. Mm-hmm. Um, he works pretty a, well with that guy, yeah. <laughs> exactly. A fake 11 cost. Yeah. And so, like, if you're playing in one of those decks with a bunch of big Cards that technically cost a lot, but we look. We both know that those are fake costs. You're right, never paying that cost. Of course, yeah. Um, Hojo does some stuff, but I think that, like, I hate the idea of drawing that card on turn one. Um, oh, Hojo, just, yeah, of course. Just sitting with this 4CP. Like, that. he's a 4CP backup that does something very cool on turn five. Um, and that's just a, a tricky place to be At sometimes. like, the earliest, yeah. Yeah, where you just got this powerful play. Like, setting up Rampier now is hard. Yeah. And Hojo, I think, has more of a setup cost than Rampier does. All right. Um, so what do you think is an underrated Earth card? Shantoto. I think that Shantoto is held back only by her name. Shantoto is a 5CP Earth backup that is uh, category 11. And it's, if Shantoto is on the field, she can also produce win CP. And so Earthwind just like a very powerful element combo. Uh, and when Shantoto enters the field, you reveal the top five cards of your deck, and you add up to one wind card and up to one earth card among them to your hand, and return the other cards to the bottom in any order. Uh, this is a really wild value off of a backup, and the fact that that backup is a dual backup after it's played, um, it's in the deck that you play this in, this is always getting you two cards. 100%. Yeah, you're not hitting, like, no duels and all mono of one side. It's just not, you know what I mean? Like, If uh, you do, just think about what you've done recently and what happened with yeah. your karma to make that happen to you. Yeah. Um, this card is just really good. Like, literally the only reason that this card does not get played is because Shantoto is, uh, it's a price, you know, like, not playing the board wipe Shantoto. But maybe we're in a world where there's uh, there's other wipes in these colors now. And maybe you can get a little more experimental. Yeah. Yeah, and it's tough because also, like, the element-fixing nature of this Shantoto mm-hmm. is outclassed by the sh- Sweeper Shantoto, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, this Shantoto is 
one of the most efficient backups you can play, I think. Mm-hmm. Like there, and also it's not like uh, a Jito Marujito where you need to have the summons in your break zone. Um, it's less random than like the five CP Roms a backup that can get you a summon, a forward, mm-hmm. and a and a backup. Like this one, I think is almost always going to hit, unlike those other ones. Yeah, not only hit, but you'll probably have like a decent choice because you'll be able to choose like all of the cards, right? Unless there's yep. like light or dark there. So it's like you'll have uh, like your first pick, and then maybe your second pick will be a little weird, right? But you get you know first round draft of those five cards for sure. That's pretty good. So my underrated card, I think it's spicy. I don't know. I like mm-hmm. Dark Elf. Yeah, dude, I think Dark Elf is actually pretty cool. I like that ugly tug uh, man. He definitely gets say, Do you know that he's one of our emotes? <laughs> like oh, you, awesome. I, I, he's only um he's Tyler's emote, so you have to have like a tier or something. So, but yeah, like uh, Tyler can just spam the dark elf face in chat now. Um, yeah, he's got that great great art. This is a full art card too. Oh, of course he is. You need to see all of his glory. That's right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's pretty neat, man, because the way that you can make him a little like invincible kind of guy. So uh, you can go ahead and read the card. I want to take yeah, your thunder here. He's a 4CP uh, Earth, again, 4CP, uh, Category 4, Job Dark Elf, uh, 8,000 power, and then if Dark Elf is dealt 9,000 damage or more, the damage becomes zero instead. So Dark Elf, it like, in previous iterations of the game, I would not have said this card is very good, but at this point, what cards that people play aren't 9K or more? <laughs> um, yeah. So, like... Most of the things that are dealing damage are dealing 9,000 or more damage uh, if you're getting into combat. Like, he can block a Susano all day. Mm-hmm. He can block a Titan all day. Um, he can block most of the big beaters that people are playing. Um, and then if you just pump him by one, uh, then he's killing everything smaller than him, and he can't be killed by things larger than him. Uh, so, like, if you have an Across in play and make him a 9,000, With then... the Titan backup? Yep, Titan Backup works too, Uh, Maria works, like there's a lot of ways to get Dark Elf to where he can't be killed by the things smaller and he can't be killed by the things larger. And so I think, I haven't seen people play it yet, Mm -hmm. but I think there's a home for this boy, Um, depending on how the meta shifts. Like if we get a bunch of small packets of damage, Dark Elf gets less interesting. Uh, Though if you do play him, you can play him with uh, Minwoo, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then he can't be killed by the smaller things and he can't be killed by the larger things. Got him. He makes combat weird. Yeah, he's uh he, he's laughing all the way to the bank too. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, what do you think for lightning? Best Ooh. lightning card. The best lightning card, man. Um, I'm I'm a little bit between. So I I almost want to say I want to say something a little bit spicy here, Gino. Maybe it's not too spicy, but um, I think X Death. Yeah, that card's good. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't have said X Death before last week's tournament, um, but wow, like I mean, I think like Ramu is my runner up because he's just such a good card. But X Death is insane. He's an ATP backup, and when he enters the field, you choose a forward opponent controls, and one forward of cost four or less in your break zone. You break your opponent's forward and then play the forward from your break zone onto the field, and as if that wasn't enough of like a decent swing, like eight to like remove their guy, play a backup, and play a guy, you get a discount. On a, so let's imagine it's like a 4CP removal spell, right? You get the discount on that because it's like only it baked into this backup. And you get a discount on playing the guy because you don't have to play the card from your hand. You get to cheat, you know, all of these kinds of like cast requirements. And then he has an S ability, Black Hole S and uh, Lightning Tap. Choose one forward, remove it from the game. <laughs> this card is so good. It's a really cool card. Yeah, if you're in the Earth... If you've got Earth in your deck and you yeah. can just recycle that, or yeah. you know maybe you've got Sages or something, um, or Lids, if you can recycle that X Death S ability multiple times, that that is a hell of a rate for RFG something. That's a crazy strong S ability. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean we were talking about Katona A being able to kill something. Mm-hmm. Now X Death, he costs eight, but he doesn't really. Yeah, um, right. Exactly. Because he's he's giving you, I think he's one of the only cards that costs as much that gives you the full value back. Yeah. Um, in a lot of cases, if you kill something four or more, he's he's paying for himself, I think. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I agree. He's very powerful. Um, I don't know that he's going to go in every deck just because not every deck wants to support an eight CP no. backup. I think a lot of people are like, uh, like they are averse to trying backups like that too. Yeah, a lot of people get scared away. Mm-hmm. Um, but hey, 
some sicko is going to play the 4 CP Ultimecia and they're going to flip X Death <laughs> off the top. Yeah. And they're going to play X Death for free. And then it's it's Christmas. Yeah. Everyone gets to live their Magical best dream. Christmas land, that's right. What about um, you, so sir? I'm just going to say Ramu then. Yeah, very good card. Uh, give it to me because uh, <laughs> it's a 5 CP. Guess what? It's a job primal, um, category 14. You don't say. If you, if you have two or more lightning summons in your break zone, Ramu gains haste. And then uh, when Ramu Lord of Levin or your lightning summon deals damage to a forward, break it. So uh, Ramu has death touch, basically, if you play Magic yeah. the Gathering. And gives your and summons he, death touch. And he gives all your summons death touch mm-hmm. uh, as long as they're lightning. So he plays really nicely with a variety of lightning summons, including one that's in the set, which is the 2CP Ramu summon, which is mm-hmm. 2CP card Ramu, EX Burst. Choose up to two forwards, deal them 1,000 damage and 1,000 more damage for each card named Ramu in your break zone. So even though it's just 1,000 damage, if Lord of Levin is in play, 1,000 is all you need. Mm-hmm. They, they just get zapped and they're like, oh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> and then dead. Uh, so, yeah, I think that this Ramu, you kind of need to build around him a little bit, but it's only a little bit. Um, just lightning, a little bit. Lightning can recycle summons pretty decently. Um you know, lightning uh, water can recycle summons pretty well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that there are also some combos with it. Like there's the Raiden uh, summon, which is 2CP, deal 1,000. Is it 1,000 or 2,000 all active forwards? It doesn't uh, matter. They all die yeah. when, when Ram is in play. Uh, I'll say it's 3,000 active forwards. And then draw a card. So like there were summons before that would not have seen play um, that now can see play because of this Lord of Levin. Um, what do we think is an overrated lightning card? It's 2,000 damage, just so we... Okay. Just so we know. It is uh, Yes, an overrated lightning card. Sorry, let me get back to my lightning cards here. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to say Ravana, actually. Um, Ravana, the Lord... Or not Lord of Eleven. <laughs> Ravana, Savior of the Nath. So maybe, um, I think, actually, at the... At the end of my experimentation, or at least my beginning experimentation, maybe the week is primal. I'm sure I'm going to eat those words in a, less than a week. But Ravana Savior of the Nath is a 6CP 9K um, category 14 job primal. Uh, basically, this guy's gimmick is uh, he can attack four times in the same turn, but he cannot gain Brave. And if this card is dealt damage, you reduce the damage by 5,000 instead. And finally, when a character is put from the field into the break zone, activate. Ravana Savior of the Nath. So the way this is built to work is basically um, you can attack four times if you keep killing characters, or as long as characters keep going to the break zone. So of course you can manipulate this yourself by um, you know breaking backups or, or like using instant speed removal on other guys. Um, and the whole point is Ravana is supposed to be able to like keep fighting forwards because it takes less damage, so it can like survive a couple combats. Um, and the dream area is like you just attack four times one turn with this. Um, I just think that that is, um, you know, it's very like, what is it? Is that a Johnny card? It's like one of those, it's just like this one of those very fun, yeah. crazy combo-y kind of it's cards. It's a thinker. And you, if you get to do it, you get to do it, and you feel good that you did it, even if you lose. But um, yeah, it's it's a real. I don't know if you're putting that together. I don't think so. Yeah, I think that Ravana really asks, do you have the ability to break your own stuff? Because your opponent's not going to walk into Ravana. Right, and if you so, can, I think there's just better ways to do it, or like better things to do with it. Uh, so you could play it in fire or lightning and then mm-hmm. you've got garland and you're paying mm-hmm. off you're breaking your backups like helps you twice over like mm-hmm. your ravana gets to attack again you're drawing cards you can also th- do things like the goblin uh monster that you can break to give something haste mm-hmm. like break that on demand give something haste draw a card ravana gets in again like there are a number of ways in that that i think you can keep this thing attacking and mm-hmm. then in earth we've got things like the new bagamnon backup mm-hmm. that forces things to block Mm-hmm. Um, if you can repeatedly like force your opponent into positions where they have to block, that's another option. And then you've got the wind lightning option where you're reactivating Ravana with activate effects. Um, so like all of those combos and none of these are mutually, mutually exclusive. All of these elements have backups that you can break. All of them have some, you know, mm-hmm. other, uh, side synergies that you can use with Ravana. Uh, maybe, you know, you fight something with Hecaton and then Ravana kills it. Mm-hmm. Um, summons are always a, a viable way to do this. But like you said, it's this is more work. And the payoff here is just combat related. And so if all you're trying to do here is attack with this big doofy idiot um, to try and kill your opponent, may I introduce you to Behemoth K, the 
the biggest <laughs> doofiest of idiots who doesn't care if your opponent blocks. Um, it and when just they gets try the to do something in. about him, he like breaks forwards. He breaks their shit, and yeah, then... Ravana doesn't protect itself at all. I mean, I guess it reduces damage a bit, but it's just um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and and Behemoth K, like when your opponent tries to block it, it deals them damage anyway. At damage five, it gains haste. Ravana never has haste unless you grant it somehow. Mm-hmm. So like, it this card feels closer to Blitz Titus. Mm-hmm. Like it's a hail mary sort of thing that can sometimes hit multiple times, um, rather than like Behemoth K, which like it's an A plus finisher all by itself. So yeah, I agree with you. Like. It's more work to make this thing your finisher than some of the other very powerful uh, yeah. big lightning finishers. Um, so for me, overrated lightning cards. I was gonna go with Ravana. I don't. I. Mm, mm. It's okay. You can just double up with me. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if we. I think up, some but... of these other guys need a little more time to uh to marinate. Yeah, I. I don't love the Dragoon as someone who plays Dragoon semi-regularly. Like, it's fine. But it's not, like, my favorite 5-cost Dragoon. So this Dragoon is 5 CP, 8K, standard unit, uh, category FF, EX. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Dragoon enters the field, choose one forward until end of turn. It loses 3,000 power for each job Dragoon or card named Dragoon you control. So mm-hmm. in a Dragoon deck, it's 5 CP break a thing. Right. Uh, for the most part. I just think, like, 5 CP is a lot for a Dragoon. And yeah, we already have, like, a 3CP break-a-thing Dragoon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you reveal four or more Dragoons from your hand, it breaks a thing. Right. Um, so Dragoons don't actually have that much trouble killing stuff. Like, Cherry Blossom kills most things. Um, so I don't know, like, even though this is a standard unit Dragoon that you can play any amount of, I don't know that Dragoons need yet another Dragoon that when it comes in, it just kills something. Um, I think I you agree. probably want more 2CP Dragoons, 3CP Dragoons. You want to flood the board and then Cherry Blossom. That's the way you win games. You don't want to pay the iron price for this Dragoon. <laughs> um, if it if it was 3CP, I'd be in for it. Uh, at 5, I think it's competing with, like, too many... Like, I don't play 5CP Dragoons that aren't named Astinian, I don't think, in a Dragoon deck right now, for the right. most part. Um, and he's not named Astinian. He sure uh, isn't. <laughs> he sure isn't. What do we think is an underrated lightning card? Roche. Angry Gamer oh, yeah. Rise yeah. Up. Yeah! I think stole Roche my is, biker boy. I think Roche is an underrated card. You can use him too, man. Um, let's just get excited about Roche, man. He's a 2CP soldier, uh, category 7. He's got haste. If you don't control any characters, he's free, free, free 99. Um, and damage 3, he just for some reason gets a uh, damage trigger where he gets plus 3,000 power. So he's got 4K power as is. He's just going to come in, turn sideways for 0 CP on turn 1. And um, then he sticks around and gets pretty big (laughs) just a good card it just if you want to build an aggro deck i mean there's no synergy you don't even need synergies he is a job soldier so there are synergies with him Mm -hmm. like you can get the zack back up that brings back soldiers um but yeah like start your aggro deck your lightning aggro deck with three roche i think start your aggro deck and start your engines baby (laughs) exactly this man he's got a burning passion (laughs) that's right Uh, and he will be swinging immediately on turn zero uh, on turn one every time if if you can get him into your opener um, and it is cool that you know it's it's if you don't control any characters so like if for some reason stuff has gone wrong it doesn't have to be turn zero or if you're, right. you're you know really balls to the wall and then you get swept like you can play roche and get haste again um yeah, and he's always hasty like he's always in the mid game he's probably gonna be a hasty 7k yeah. for, for two which is totally acceptable as someone who's played Yugiri sometimes, <laughs> boy, I wish it was exactly, rough. exactly. Um, all right. So moving on to water, what is the best water card, and why is it probably one of the primals? Oh, I was gonna say Luzoff actually. Ah, Luzoff's great too. Yeah, I Another think that Luzoff is pretty pretty busted. Um, it can really blow people out. So he's a four CP backup. He's a Corsair. Uh, category 11, which is always relevant. He's got back attack. That rare keyword is always so strong. When Luzov enters the field, choose one forward you control, return it to its owner's hand, and when you do so, your opponent selects one forward they control and put it into the break zone. This feels a lot like the XF we were talking about, and I probably like them for the same reasons. Um, developing any kind of backup with a two-for-one is always really strong, especially when it's like um, this could potentially be a three-for-one. <laughs> totally. It's just, yeah, it's... um. And also just the removal, the way the removal works is is really nice because your opponent has to select a guy um, and they have to basically do it after 
you're already going to blow out whatever their other like plan was, so it usually is going to set them back twice. Um, yeah, I think this is a really incredible card. Yeah, I think Luzoff, like, Water has a number of cards that love being bounced, mm-hmm. and yeah, I mean, it doesn't even have to be Water. Like, Water uh, water Wind will work, it'll trigger mm-hmm. Brismark, um, it triggers, uh, like, your Vikings, it'll get multiple draws off of them. Uh, reset your Layla. Like there are a lot of cool things. It, just saving something for removal, even if you don't kill something, sometimes mm-hmm. is enough. And just having back attack, surprising people in mid combat, you know, getting the block and then getting out of there. Like there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with Lose Off for sure. Um, I'm just gonna go with uh, Le- Leviathan, Lord of the Wool, mm-hmm. uh, because it's just the maybe one. Of, it's the apex predator, I think. Yeah. Of yeah. Uh, most of decks. Of water. Oh, yeah. Of water yeah. for sure. Nine uh, CP. Uh, 9k, which is surprisingly small for Mm -hmm. 9cp, but Job Primal, Category 14. When Leviathan, Lord of the Wool, enters the field, choose up to one forward opponent controls, one backup opponent controls, and up to one monster opponent controls. Return them to their owner's hands. When a character is returned from the field to its owner's hand, choose one forward opponent controls. It loses 9,000 power until end of turn. So Leviathan, basically, as soon as this card is in play, it's going to probably bounce two cards your opponent has and then deal nine, minus 9k to up to two forwards. You can stack them on one forward for minus 18. Um, if your opponent is so unfortunate as to have a monster, it will it will get three things. So this is this is the water version of the one-sided board wipe, uh, kind of complementing Susano and Titan, and water needs it more. Mm-hmm. And those other two elements, it did not have access to this sort of one-sided uh, board wipe. Now, the turn to. after you... Oh, uh, what was that? It used to. It used to be its entire identity. Well, yeah, but Cagnazzo... I know, it's a long time build, ago, huh? Build your own board wipe with Cagnazzo. You're just not getting the time to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so now... enough power. Like, you like, literally can't get there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He used to be able to get 7Ks yeah. by, like, minus 4K, minus 4K. Gotcha. Now it's like, nah, we need to play mm-hmm. this gigantic boy who's going to bounce through things and then mm-hmm. minus 9k through exactly things. exactly um but yeah i think that you know he's a he's at danger of a Matarasu like all those other ones are uh but it's important to mention when a character is returned from its field so it's not just your opponents like if for mm-hmm. some reason uh leviathan uh is around when like you lose off or you use Scholar backup to bounce mm-hmm. something. Or if Bismarck and heaven help your opponent if you have Leviathan and Bismarck in play at the same time. <laughs> yeah, like what were they doing to do it? And the Primals just run rampant. How did this happen to them? But they're in a bad place. They're probably not winning that game. Um, but yeah, I think that it's just so powerful. Like mm-hmm. you just hail Mary slam this card, and it takes over the game. Um, and unlike a lot of the other powerful. Uh, board wipes it's not one time like you can keep bouncing things and it'll keep controlling your opponent's board it's it's persistent advantage mm-hmm. um what do we think is an overrated water card i you know i'm looking up and down this list i really don't have one i, yeah. I don't know i think that the i think that people underrate maybe a few more of them than they should and that um there's also some that are just bad but i don't know that there's any that are overrated I, you know, I'm just going to say Golbez, not because Golbez is bad necessarily, Mm -hmm. but I don't know that this card will actually pan out the way that people hope. So it's a 5 CP, 9K, uh, Job Warlock, Category to City of Final Fantasy, and 4, Final Fantasy 4. At the beginning of the attack phase, during each of your turns, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a forward of cost 3 or less, you may play it onto the field, and then you can dull, put 4 cards into the break zone, choose one forward, you gain control of it. So both sides of this card's abilities really hope that things have gone well for you. Like yeah. At the beginning of your attack phase, you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's not a forward of cost three or less, he does nothing. Um, no ability. Now, every turn you're going to get a look, and maybe you're rigging the top of your deck with the new Saha Jin backup that lets you kind of look at the top two, mm-hmm. um, which requires you to have a primal in play. So, you know, to get that set up, you've got a primal in play, probably Lakshmi, I would guess which we'll maybe talk about in underrateds or something. Mm-hmm. Um, or you've got Geomancer Backup, which every time I tell you I'm thinking of playing Geomancer Backup, you're always like, what are you doing? Yeah. That they made um, a good one now, though. They did. It's better. But mm-hmm. you that one needs more setup than Geomancer did. This is true. And so this Golbez, like, you need you need uh, forwards that are small. 
to play them for free and mm-hmm. you know maybe you just don't ha- you see a backup and you don't get it or Golbez himself doesn't fulfill that criteria so um stacking your deck full of three and less costs to make Golbez maximize also doesn't necessarily feel super great in the modern game where your your three drops and less it used to be that you could just do that and you'd just play a bond deck and it'd be great because yeah. all the best cars were three and less i watch not anymore. Try to do that all the time and it doesn't really pan out for them. not yeah. no more anymore exactly uh, like the big things are just too good. Like they do too much to they, they outclass your small stuff now. Um, and then his dull put four characters in the break zone, steal a steal a forward from your opponent. Steal your girl. Yeah. Like you've got four forwards in play and you want to can them <laughs> to steal something. Like that's gonna be a, a viable move sometimes. But like things are going real well for you if you've got four. Um, so this is a card that feels like it goes great with Vikings specifically. <laughs> Like, you can flood the board with them really well. You can get – many of them cost three or less. Like, they ask your deck to be pretty lean on backups. Um, but I don't know that I want to do this. Like, it's a persistent effect. It's c- kind of like Good King Mogomog, except it has a much higher fail rate. Yeah. Yeah, like. and that's no good. No bueno. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, I don't like those kinds of things. I, I don't even – you know, I'm playing Mogomog, and that's outside of my element, too, so – I agree yes. with you. I'm gonna go ahead. You know what? You know, I think Golbez. <laughs> wow, what a good choice. <laughs> yeah, but I think the person who solves Golbez or plays it, you're gonna have a great time. Like, he's, oh yeah, he's fun. When he's sure. going well, he's so fun and so good. Um, but yeah, sometimes you're just gonna be like, oh, I played a one CP forward for free. Got there. All right. Um, what do you think is an uh an underrated water card? Octomammoth. Octomammoth is my underrated water. Fuck card. yeah. Octomammoth is just really good tempo. It's a 3 CP water monster. That's category 4, which is cool. Job yep. Octopus. Now Ultras is not alone. Uh, if you control 3 or more water backups, Octomammoth also becomes a forward with 8,000 power. And when it enters the field, you choose up to 2 forwards opponent controls, return them to their owner's hands. Um, he doesn't really care how many water backups you have to do the second part, so sometimes it's just like a spell that he sticks around, and maybe he comes a forward later. Uh, I really like that the timing works out in your benefit both ways on that, kind of. You know, you don't miss that trigger. Um, but yeah, Octa Mammoth is a, we, we used to pay six for that. Yes. We, back in my day, we yeah. played Sildra and we were happy to pay six. Mm-hmm. Or we yeah. played Saha Jin and then we played three more characters and then we sacked Saha Jin to yeah. bounce two things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this guy's also over curve when he becomes a forward too. And like all those guys were like under curve when they became a forward. So it's like, um, yeah, I think Octa Mammoth is just really, really good. Yeah. Like just very cheap for double bounce for sure. Um, for me, uh, do people not know that Lakshmi is really good? I haven't seen too many people playing with her yet. Mm, I don't know. She's she's always going to be good in those decks that are like the slower kind of like controller late game decks, and I think that those decks never are as prevalent at the beginning of a meta. So much as be why you haven't seen as much of it. Um, I don't know if people are low on it, but it's definitely worth talking about if you want to just plug yet another primal. <laughs> yeah, the four CP primal, uh, category fourteen, seven thousand power. So she's under curve. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have five or more cards in your hand, Lakshmi gains. If Lakshmi Lady of Bliss. Uh, is dealt damage, reduce the damage by 2,000 instead, and then at the end of each of your turns, draw one card. So Lakshmi, like, the first turn, if she just survives one turn, she's mostly paid for herself. Um, if she survives two turns, she has, in fact, paid for herself. Um, and every turn after that is gravy. So um, she, I think, combos really well with the Sahajin backup, which is the uh, the water backup that cares about primals. Right. And this one is dull. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one on the top, one on the bottom. Um, and you can only use it if you have a water primal. So these two combo really well together. Like you're fixing your draws, you're slowly accruing value. And I don't know that you even need to try that hard. Like if yeah, she doesn't just, die, just good. you're just, you're up cards on your opponent persistently. Like usually you go, you jump through hoops and she doesn't ask you to do anything. Yeah, it turns out drawing cards is really good. <laughs> yeah, it turns out, turns out it's very good. Um, so yeah, she doesn't need any help at all. Very powerful. Water might be the most powerful element in this set. I think fire and water both have arguments for it. Hmm. Um, lightning's good, too. I mean, uh, sorry, Earth's really good, too. And wind. Um, wind also pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, it turns out they're, they're all pretty good. They're well, all pretty at least they all get cool stuff, yeah. Um, ice may be the weakest, which yeah, has been I, a theme, I think, lately. I just think, like, Larsa could be a deck by himself. Mm-hmm. I think Luzoff could fit in a bunch of decks. Yeah. Lakshmi in a bunch of decks. Jekt, I think, is... We didn't even talk about... I feel like I should read Jekt just because he's, I think, changes water's color pie in a way. Yeah. 
Like he's 5 CP, 9K. He's a job blitz baller, category 10 and to City of Final Fantasy. When Jekt enters the field, choose one forward. If one or more forwards were attacking this turn, return the chosen forward to its owner's hand. If three or more forwards were attacking this turn, break the chosen forward and draw one card instead. And then he has an S, Jekt block. Choose any number of summons, auto abilities, action abilities, or special abilities, cancel their effect. This is the most powerful block that we have. Nothing else. He's a else. powerful man. He's a very powerful man. He like he meets the opponent at the apex like Dikembe and he sends their shot back. He says cry uh, cry. Yes. Stuff him. Yeah. And like n- there's no other card that handles activated special abilities, summons, uh auto abilities. Like he handles whatever effect your opponent was relying on. Yeah. Jack is like no thank you. Yeah, it's and a, it's if, really unique. If you got into a fight somehow on the stack, like, you know, summon. No, I play my summon. No, I play my summon. Jack Block is like, cancel your thing, cancel your thing. My cancel things all happen. All. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, I usually don't play a card just for its S ability, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. Jack is good enough. Like, you run three Jacks, even if you never use the first part of the card, just to have Jack Block available to you. Because um, Water didn't get to do this before. Like, now They're Water. They're happy to Earth, have it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, like, recycle stuff. <laughs> Um, so moving on, let's, uh, go to the multi elements next. Sure. Um, so we've got earth, fire, water, wind, and, um, lightning, ice are like the new element combos that we're getting. And then we want to run this one. Do you want to just like, um, best across all nine? Yeah, I think let's just go best across all nine. Cause in previous times, like we talked about the commons and the rares, then the, uh, legends, mm-hmm. Uh, or in this case, it's going to be common hero legends. And there's also like a smattering of, for some reason, there's an earth, another earth wind, uh, lightning fire, and a yes. water ice, and none of the other combos got support. It, weird, very weird this set. But um, why don't we just uh, go across all of them? Because I think there are fewer that are impactful than before. Uh, so what do we think is the best multi element card in this set? Uh, the best multi element card in the entire set, uh, personally, I'm going to say it's going to be Alcid. Um, and I don't think that he's necessarily the most individually powerful card. I just think that uh, he's going to enable this archetype, and I, I've seen people doing some pretty disgusting things with Alcid and um, some of those like Bear Stale type decks, um, or, or like any just like the like I'm flooding the board with all these forwards and now I'm coming in type decks. Um, I'd have to put it between the Alcid and the Bear myself. Um, so Alcid, I'll just read him real quick. He's a four drop uh, Ice Lightning card. Um, Job agent, category 12, when Alcid enters the field, you can play one ice or lightning forward of cost four or less from your hand onto the field. Um, and when Alcid or an ice forward enters your field, choose up to one forward, freeze it. And when a lightning forward you control attacks, choose one forward, dull it. Um, this guy's just good for the same reason that old Alcid used to be good, like just slamming two things onto the table. Uh, four drops, especially. Really, really powerful. Um, like, just you can just Alcid into Renault, Renault the Alcid, then just play another <laughs> like forward. Um, he does some really, really cool stuff. Uh, I think he's just a very, very powerful dual element card and uh, yeah. element combo that really needed it. Like the uh, whenever a lightning forward you control attacks, choose one forward, dull it. Like lightning loves he, that. Blocking, blocking not allowed. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to make good blocks anymore. Um, and you know as long Here as you keep playing to the board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with Zeromus yeah. personally. Yeah, I like Zeromus a lot. The, uh, the common thread there. I think that Ice Lightning definitely got the best duels. Yeah, so Zeromus, uh, and they all go together, which is, yep. like, that's been the best, all the best dual element combos have been the ones where they just gave three cards that all go in the same deck. Your, exactly. Your Ice wins. Um, so Zeromus in this, uh, uh, Water Earth too. Um, Zeromus is 3 CP, uh, Lightning Ice, 8,000 power, so he's already under-costed. Um, his job is Lunarian, and he's Category 4. Uh, he is also card named Zemus in all situations. When Zeromus enters the field or attacks, choose one character, freeze a character, so you can get backups. And then at the end of each of your opponent's turns, dull all forwards they control, and then at damage 3, he gains haste. So basically, your opponent's not allowed to block. Yeah, it makes it very anymore. difficult for them to like react by playing blockers, which is um, insane. Yeah, if, if he just survives one turn cycle, you're going to have clear boards to swing into. Clear as skies. Long as, your opponent, as long as your opponent doesn't have reactivation or, um, I guess, Gadon mm-hmm. or Guy, um, you're just going to be able to swing into them with impunity, which is exactly what Ice Lightning wants to do. Yep. 
Uh, I don't think there are going to be many decks with Alcid that don't have Zeromas. I think they're just going to be running. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think they games. just go hand in hand for sure. Um, so what do we think is the most overrated multi-element card? Zidane. Damn you. <laughs> I just think it's really hard to ask me not to play the 3CP Zidane. Um, yeah. He's just so good. This guy's a wind, water, 2CP, forward, thief uh, from category 9. Obviously, he can't be blocked. When Zidane deals damage to your opponent, choose up to one forward and return it to its owner's hand. And then steal, S, and wind. Your opponent reveals their hand, select one card in their hand, and they remove it from the game. And then you can cast it as though you owned it, but it's only on the turn that you use steal. So things can get a little weird. Also, unlike Lonnie, um, it does not make it easier for you to cast it. Right. So you need to have the right colors. You need to. So it, it sounds very exciting. I think the Zidane is actually harder to get lined up than you think. I think he dies to a stiff breeze and uh, he's not he doesn't have haste. So I think all this stuff works against him like really badly. Yeah, you really need the Zidane to get help, uh, even though he can't be blocked. You need him to get support and bouncing your opponent uh well, you can bounce your own stuff. Like, maybe you're going to be doing... Maybe you're living in Magical Christmas Land. You've got your Bismarck, and you've got your Zidane, and you're just getting in there, and then you play your Leviathan. Now you're... Everything's bouncing all the time. Uh, it's a bouncy castle out here. Um, but I think Zidane, like you said, he dies to a lot of things. Um, he's not particularly fast, and Water Wind doesn't have good ways to give him haste. So it's going to be tough. And abstaining from... Zidane has so many good cards. I yeah, don't, is the, so many. Has there even been a... I guess there's like a bad common Zidane. Yeah, there's one but, that's like weird from the earliest sets. Yeah. But Otherwise, like yeah, somebody really likes them. Yeah, we've got like Opus 1 Zidane, impossible to block, can't really be targeted. Like, there's the Water Zidane that whenever... He, like, there were decks built around the Water Zidane getting in and drawing cards, and then he becomes unblockable. Uh, there's the... You know, thought sees Zidane that takes cards from your opponent's hand. Like and the road guy... to Nat Zidane that he also takes cards from your opponent's hand. Yeah. Oh, totally. And then there's the the fire Zidane that mm -hmm. just kills mm -hmm. stuff with haste. And you know, it's just a tough. The light tough Zidane. <laughs> he was light like Zidane for a while Absurd. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absurd in nine decks back when All nine was Zidane's. the thing you could do. Yeah. So like, I I have a hard time. I guess you can make a deck with a ton of Zidanes and just steal all the time, and mm -hmm. maybe you're playing Earth so that you've got access to all the elements. I just think he's – he reads like he should be a staple, and I don't think he will be. I, I think, think he's, he's just missing the word hard. haste, man. I think haste would really – um. Oh, for sure. Yeah, maybe that's too good. Like maybe we're, maybe we're playing him in fire, mm -hmm. or maybe we're playing him in, you know, Earth, Wind, Water – like Earth, Rainbow shit. Yeah, maybe. And you're just playing Zidane for value, but I, I have a hard time. Like, he needs more help. Mm -hmm. um, Send so help. So for me, uh, for me, the most overrated card, I mean, I don't like Vaughn, and it's just because he doesn't have the support for the most part. But I think, like, of the ones in this set that don't have the support, um, I think that even at his best, he's not as good as, like, Barrett will be if Barrett gets more job avalanche operatives. Yeah. So Vaughn is 6 CP. He's, again, wind, water, which it's it's funny with us saying wind, water cards are overrated since this uh, element combo dominated the game for years. Yeah. Um, A while ago at this point, though. But yeah. Uh, when So he's 6 CP, uh, 8,000 power, job sky pirate, uh, category to city of Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy 12. When Vaughn enters the field, you may search for one job sky power to cost two or less and play it onto the field, then activate all the backups you control. When a job sky power you control is chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities, choose up to two backups, activate them. So you get a free two drop when he comes into play, which is cool. Like, you're you're getting more efficient um, at that point. There just right now aren't a lot of good two-cost sky pirates. Uh, two is a really narrow cost range. Like, you're not – you're probably going to get a backup. You might get a very small forward. Uh, there is that Fran that gets bigger with the more sky, sky pirates you have in play, and that synergy is pretty good. But, like, it's still not I even know. like that big. Yeah, I mean, I tried it, trust me. Yeah, and Wind, Wind Water doesn't need help activating all of its backups. Like, I guess Sky Pirates did because Sky Pirates didn't have this specific effect before. But, like, just don't play Sky Pirates. Just well, the play theme, Wind Water without Sky Pirates. Well, the theme for that, um, that archetype is, like, they have to flood the board. Like, they have to. Um, so something like this actually does really help that game plan. It's just the issue, the biggest problem that this guy has is that the two best Sky Pirates are him and the Balthier from last set, and they both do the same thing. They're, like, looking for the same targets, like two CP Sky Pirates. And the issue with that is, like, they're all mediocre at best. 
So it's like, yes. you know, if they really had um, just a few more, really, it's weird that he comes in the set all by himself. With like, this guy's useless and limited. It's um, 100%. It, yeah, all they had to do is put like two other pirates in. Um, somebody like cares enough to give them like these cool cards, like these gorgeous art, but like not to just like one more two CP back up or forward in. I don't know. I don't get it. But yeah, right now I don't think it's quite there. Yeah, I like. The fact that his first ability activates all the backups you control, that mm-hmm. means that if you play this on turn one, you're getting a backup and you're activating one backup. That's not good enough. Yeah, that's not very good. Time. I mean, yeah, it goes into what? Like maybe a 3CP backup. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, he feels gross off a of four. I mean, he's very, very strong off four backups, totally. that's for sure. Um, but then again, it's like, okay, well, if you have four backups at that point, you probably have Tomash down already. So you're getting uh, Fran or Elza, that's it. Or I guess Kites. Or not Kites, uh, Philo? Oh, God, they're all so Philo. bad. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing is like most of them are bad and God, they're all if, bad. You, yeah. if you do all of this, mm-hmm. you're like reactivating stuff and like, why wasn't I just, I mean, you just play Fina. Like there's so many really big, powerful effects at 6 CP that do more mm-hmm. than what this Vaughn does. Like he, he gives you a very small advantage and then resets you um, to make another play. But <laughs> at that point, it's so late in the game. Like most of the games I've been playing, I don't know about you. Like once we get to four backups, I'm playing a haymaker to end the game most of the time we're trying to yeah um, i mean you've even mentioned that, that in our earlier in our games before right you're like we're just playing haymakers every turn back and forth yeah and vaughn's not a haymaker like he, no. he gives you an incremental advantage and then maybe lets you play another haymaker mm-hmm. uh after him which would be good but i just don't know that you're gonna have the time or the cards to do that i i'm happy to be proven wrong but up until now sky pirates just haven't had the support and yeah. i don't think he pushes them over the top by himself in the way that like uh ferris with fire uh Fire, water, warriors of light for a yeah, minute. Ferris, did. Cyan, um, yeah. you know, like New Yang and Ursula, um, yeah, and just Sophie the, with monks. Yeah, Alice, yeah, like all this kind of stuff. These these guys are real payoff cards. Um, sure. Sky Pirates really lacking a payoff. Yeah, I'm I'm worried that he's more nine. They've got good setup, there. but they have bad payoff. For sure. If this like did a bunch of damage to stuff based mm-hmm. on the number of Sky Pirates, give me a reason to play a ton of Sky Pirates. Yeah. Um. All right, what do we think is an underrated multi-element card? An underrated multi-element card. Um, I'm going to have to say Barrett here, I think. Sure. I think that maybe um, people are, like, just totally sleeping on both of these. And, and Alex Hancock, he's the um, one of the previous national – or, sorry, previous world champions um, from over there in England. He, he does, like, a little write-up about different cards um, and what he thinks of them when the set first comes out, as many people do. Uh, and he didn't even rate the Barrett or Tifa because he said it's, it's almost not even worth looking at these until that new starter deck comes out. Um, I definitely, I definitely felt well because like you know I get it like they're just missing so much of what was supposed to make them work, right? Uh, like, like like long story short, we're supposed to have that stuff already by now. It's like there's like other reasons that we don't have that starter deck yet, right? But like these guys are supposed to kind of be in like a different, um, come yes. out in a different world, yeah. So it's like the fact that the cloud that is an avalanche operative doesn't exist makes the Tifa have like a, this weird non-synergy with this Barret. Um, and it makes the Legend Tifa just the superior Tifa right now, right? So I think that this Tifa is kind of easy to just like not think so much about. But this Barret is pretty good by himself because he has that Minwoo text, uh, which, which surprised you, right? He's yep. um, he's overcurved the 9K. So when the Tief is behind him, he's the 11K. And you know how she does that damage tree that can't be broken by things that don't deal damage. So 11K is a pretty big ask, and you have to do it all at once. So Barret actually becomes this pretty good chonker. And then he has this awesome um, second ability where you can just like filter cards that now the reason that the second ability isn't total trash because there aren't more avalanche operative forwards yet is that you can change non seven cards into seven cards to make the cloud from this set better and that's like really relevant that's actually like a really really strong thing they can do together um that type of filtering is really really nice but tifa isn't quite there yet without more avalanche operative forwards and the barrett just gets better when those come out as well yeah so his uh, his text is he's four CP oh, for a 9K, <laughs> yeah. job avalanche operative, category 7. So his first ability is that if he's dealt damage less than his power, the damage becomes zero instead. So there's the Minwoo effect. Um, he gives all job avalanche forwards other than Barrett haste, and then you can discard one card to choose a job avalanche operative other than Barrett in your break zone and add it to your hand. You can only use this ability once per turn. So yeah, you can turn this late game backup you drew into a Tifa mm-hmm. right now. Um, 
So well, you like, can turn it into any avalanche operative. It doesn't matter. Just but right now, it's just for the clouds. No, because it doesn't say forward. So he gives only avalanche operative forwards haste. There's a bunch of avalanche operative backups. True. Sure, sure. Um, and you're probably yeah, playing them in Jesse. the deck. Yeah. So Jesse Biggs wedge. So it's like um, the fact that he can filter non seven cards into those backups, and you could discard those backups into the cloud effect is like really relevant. Totally. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I I think this Barra definitely just on rate alone, mm -hmm. um, and most like Fire Earth, it's not hard to get twenty five plus mm -hmm. seven cards in there, and like many of the uh, Avalanche operative backups, you wanted to play anyway. Like the Jesse's great right. with any clouds. The <laughs> Wedge gets you um, a number of. He gets the Barra and the Tifa now. Yeah, yeah. Barra and the Tifa. Yeah. So like there mm -hmm. there's synergies there for mm -hmm. sure. Um, for me, I guess uh, underrated. Cards. I think go ahead, Cloud of Darkness. Okay. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I was gonna say go ahead, say Gesho, Gino. I love Gesho, but like Gesho, yeah. uh, Gesho suffers from the same problem that ninjas do. Like so, Gesho, I can say both of them. He's five CP for an eight K. He's job ninja. He's uh, category eleven. When Gesho enters the field, opponent reveals their hand. Select one card from their hand. Your opponent removes it from the game. So he's a slightly bigger Zidane for more cost. Uh, so the wind Zidane specifically. Yeah. Um, um, it's nice for those colors. I'll say that. Yeah, he's great for, like, he gives this ability to colors that didn't have it before. Um, he's got the power uh, with ninjas to be basically colorless. He pays for two of the elements you want to play for ninjas anyway, and Edge is reducing his cost, so he's probably four instead of five. So, like, all this stuff is great stuff. Uh, my problem is that ninjas right now I just don't think are very good, but he will go in the ninja deck. Whatever the ninja deck is, he will be a two of probably. Because um, I don't think you ever want to cast this guy for five in that deck. In that deck, right. you really want to play a bunch of small little idiots. And then <laughs> Gesho will come down kind of uh, a little bit later to hopefully rob your opponent of a sweeper that they foolishly did not play or could not play. Right. Um, like, Gesho, take your Philia is going to be fun to do. Yeah, um, uh, and really critical to a win some ninja games. Oh, totally. Like, there, I have... In Opus 13, I've played quite a few games where I was, uh, my opponent clearly had the answer but they couldn't afford it because I put so much pressure in early that they couldn't save up CP to make their big play, and Gesho just keeps them on the back foot, which is great. Um, but I just think right now the density of sweepers is so high, and, and you know maybe Gesho finds a home in other places just because like that Zidane effect is so strong. Going to your opponent's hand, taking something has been strong for the entirety of this game. It's strong in every game it's printed in. So uh, you might want this just on raid alone um, because th these elements don't have any ability to manipulate the hand otherwise. Um, but we'll see. Uh, and the Cloud of Darkness is uh, 4 CP. So that's, she is Water, Ice, uh, Category, City of Final Fantasy, and Final Fantasy 3, Job Wraith, uh, 8,000 power, and then during this turn, if your opponent has discarded a card from their hand due to the summons or ability, due to, I assume, your summons or abilities. Yeah, that's actually a really bad typo that I identified on that card right away. Yeah, the cost required to cast Cloud of Darkness is reduced by two. During this turn, if you have drawn two or more cards, the cost required to cast Cloud of Darkness is reduced by two. And then when Cloud of Darkness enters the field, choose one character, dull it, and freeze it. So Cloud of Darkness, if you can make your opponent discard, she's two CP. If you can... Now, remember, this includes the cards you draw for your turn. So if you just draw one extra card, uh, she costs two less. And if you get both, she's free. So she does uh, some pretty nasty stuff with... I mean, Ice Water obviously can trigger both of these things. Um, Ice Wind can also trigger both of these things pretty easily. Um, and I think that if you're paying two for an 8k that dulls and freezes something on ETB more than half the time, I think you're happy. Yeah, I mean... um. She's she's uh great when she's free because if it's for free it's for me. Outstanding when she's free. I think she's good when she's two. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I ever want to play this four if I can avoid it. But even four four, it's not like the worst thing in the world. It's uh, I mean, Genesis. It's kind of a Genesis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Genesis one k bigger. Um, it which is relevant up. now. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Cloud of Darkness, like getting her to cost two, is actually pretty trivial in a lot of these decks. Yeah, you have to um, either draw one or discard hard. one, right? That's basically it. Yeah, and your water ice. Like, what are mm -hmm. what's happening if you're not getting your opponent to do one of the if you're not doing one of those things on your turn? Mm -hmm. Like, it's your deck's doing weird stuff. Stuff's gone bad for you. 
Um, though that I think speaks to the reason why Cloud of Darkness is not better. Mm-hmm. Like if things are not going well, she makes a good situation better. Uh, she does not make a bad situation good. Yeah, I agree. Um, and let's close up with the dark and the light cards. Oh boy. Uh, which oh boy. Um, so what's the best card? Maybe Stern the best Leonis. card of the set. Stern Leonis. Hands down. <laughs> So wow. I want to read this card? Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, Stern Leonis is a 4-2-P prince. He's 9K. He's dark. He's from FFBE. The cost required to cast your forwards is reduced by 1 and can't become 0. Remove 4 forwards of the break zone from the game as an action ability to select one of the three following actions. To choose one forward, deal a 7K, choose a monster, and break it, or until the end of the turn, all the forwards you control gain 4,000 power and brave. This card's absurd. Every single part of this card is relevant. Uh, so first, he's over curve. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, 9K is, like we say, the going rate these days, but a 4CP 9K, very nice. Um, FFBE is relevant. Prince is relevant. You know, this guy's tutorable by a bunch of cards that are already seeing play. He slides into pretty much any deck that plays forwards, which is, guess what, every deck. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he has this ability that really has like this non-cost, right? Because a lot of times things like that's why Celteus is so powerful because like you're fueling this ability with something that is like you can't use it anyway, right? It's not in your hand. It's like this extra resource that normally you don't even tap. So Stern Leonis all of a sudden turns this break zone that most decks just didn't do anything with. You just ignore it, right? It's like turns into this huge battery for just this crazy set of action abilities. Um, just the, being able to choose if I were to deal a 7K with no conditions, really strong. Um, and then being able to give your entire board 4,000 power and brave is absurd. And the fact that this isn't limited to your turn or during a main phase is really, really relevant and so powerful. Yeah, this card is going to be everywhere. And for some reason, it also breaks a monster. No cost res- restriction, no nothing. Yeah. Just like, if that's relevant, if your opponent was so foolish as to play, uh, Oct- not Octorock, what's uh, Octomammoth, uh, yeah. Octomammoth, Octorok. like, yeah. A bunch of these really powerful monsters that they printed, Stern Leonis just eats them alive. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't pay a lot for, and like, at the end of a game, Stern Leonis is going to be fueled if you didn't go after your opponent's break zone in some way, like with a yep. Mist Dragon. Stern Leonis is going to have, for most normal decks that are constructed regularly, mm-hmm. he will have four or five activations. And that's a cost, um, too, right? So like as soon as he hits the table, you can't do anything to stop him from being able to do it. You can just kind of make it weird when he does it. Yeah, like you're... Yeah. If you react to the first activation, he can activate again in response mm-hmm. Um, if you target him, he can activate in response. Uh, there's no way that you're not going to get all of those activations. You, if you miss dragon in response to him activating the first time, he activates again and it, it doesn't matter. There's no way you're <laughs> stopping him. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, exactly. There's no way you're stopping him. And you know, the thing about the monster thing is like, it's cards like these that really prevent monsters from seeing play. Because when you have a card that where they just go, ah, I don't know, and they just like staple, break a monster onto it. It really is like, okay, man, this card is already universal. Now you're just going to give every single deck is going to have, like, just like, oh, I happen to have monster answers. Like, every, you know what I mean? Like, it's just and like. It's dark. So that's what I'm it's saying. Literally it's every it's deck. a universal card, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, when you give a universal card like that, just like break a monster, it's like, okay, now the monster deck doesn't just have to worry about one bad matchup. They have to worry about, like, the best tech card that's not even anybody. There's no deck building cost to playing Stern Leonis. For most of these decks. I mean, I guess you sacrifice a light dark slot, right? But, like, come on. Um, like, already, the way that uh, picking a dark or a light card was, for most decks, was what is the most broken one I'm playing it? Yeah, pick That's the best it. one. Exactly. And it, and it just replaces whatever it was before. Yeah. And wouldn't you know it, it's dark again, huh? Yeah, and, like, I'm going to move to, moving over to uh, overrated, I'm going to go with Mashuri. Mm-hmm. Um, which is the counterpart to Stern Leonis. Uh, she's a princess. She's 2 CP, category FFBE, 6,000 power. So again, over co- uh, overpowered for its cost um, and kind of mirror to Stern Leonis. Uh, the cost required to cast your summons is reduced by one and then remove three summons in the break zone from the game. Select one of the following actions. Draw one card. Choose one forward. Return it to its owner's hand. During this turn, the cost required to cast your next summon is reduced by three. My problem with Mashari is my problem with every summon deck. If, like, Stern Leonis will probably have 20 or more cards in a deck to key off of. Mashari, to get 20 or more in your deck uh, of summons, like, 
it's so hard to get that many summons into your deck. Um, I, I haven't seen very many decks that do it. Apparently, there's a Doga deck now that can play a lot. Yeah, there's like one. Yeah, the Doga deck. <laughs> there's like one, and that's cool, and you'll probably play Mashari, but most decks will not be configured in such a way to make Mashari work. And even if you did uh, do the work to make Mashari uh, do something special and you know she does have the same benefits she's relevant because princess she's relevant because ffbe like she benefits from sarah the same that stern leonis does um her abilities aren't as good as stern leonis mm-hmm. like stern leonis comes in and kills your opponent's shit breaks their monsters and then makes your forwards too big to kill with damage um and gives them brave why does he, why do they get brave i don't get it uh, yeah. uh, Mashiri draws you more cards, so that's good. Like, you know, you're turning your spent fuel into more fuel. Although summons, like, recycle more than forwards tend to in mm-hmm. a lot of decks. So yeah. even that can sometimes not be as good. Uh, bounce something, which is good, but again, not as powerful as just killing it nine times out of ten. Um, and then further cost reduction on a summon when it can't become zero, like... I'm charging up. What is the summon that I'm putting in my deck that's super expensive that I'm going to juice up? Fire more. Yeah. Like most of those summons get filtered out of your deck because you can't play them. Like mm-hmm. you can't hard cast them, and you can't count on Mashari having fuel to make it castable. Like I want to cast Arc, but I don't think Mashari's the way to do it. Um, or like seven CP Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, four CP less makes those cards playable, but then you can't play it in the early game. Uh, so I think that she's just hamstrung because summons are not as good as forwards. And It's also weird know. to not play, like, uh, she's competing in her own color and her own category against Citra, who yep. just, like, ends up feeling like a really good card in those summon decks. Totally. Like, getting to cast a summon another time and having her, like, remove a blocker from, or, or remove an attacker ability just feels as or more impactful than what Mashiri does. And also, like, Mashiri on a neutral board... Most summons are not neutral plays. They're usually removal. Um, yeah. Or they need specific circumstances to shine. And so being 1 CP cheaper, like Stern Leonis loves an empty board. You mm-hmm. play Stern Leonis and then you flood the board with forwards. Yeah, he's Mashiri like, all right, let's fill her up. <laughs> yeah. Mashiri's like, okay, I, once you play something, it's going to be dead five times over. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're limited by the number of targets in a lot of cases, unless you're really trying to, like, combo off and draw cards. Yeah which tends to not be good enough in this game. Um, and then we've got two other uh, legends, uh, Shinryu and Omega. I haven't seen anyone try Omega yet. Yeah, I mean, he's all right. He does a thing where cool. at the end of uh, your turn, he gets a counter, and at the end of your opponent's turn, if there's a counter on him, he does him a point of damage. So he does like this charge up and shoot thing, and then you can also remove a counter from him to protect him from abilities. Uh, he's a 5-drop 10k. That's that's the, my spark knows Omega read. And he's a special, so your mm-hmm. title decks get him going. Yeah. Um. But basically, yeah. I, I mean, he's like this slow crawl, deal damage over time thing. I just think that it's like uh, it's probably decent, and uh, it's a good thing to make them have to deal with. Um. Uh, I just think that things like Stern Leonis is just so obviously exciting that you just kind of go that direction anyway. Like like not playing Stern Leonis is the worst cost for playing Omega. Yeah. Totally. Like and, and the same Omega's thing for this like other this... guy kind of too. <laughs> Yeah, Shinryu, 5 CP, uh, when Shinryu enters the field, 5 CP, uh, Job Dragon, 9,000 power, Mm -hmm. again, category special, when Shinryu enters the field, deal 10,000 damage to all the forwards, it costs 3, 6, and 9 opponent controls, at the beginning of main phase 1 during each of your turns, reveal the top card of your opponent's deck, of your opponent's deck? Yep. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. If it's a forward, I I thought it was your deck, (laughs) even better. Uh, if it's forward, all the forwards, opponent controls, loses 7,000 power. If it's not a forward, draw two cards. So, like, it, those are super powerful, but again, yeah, great value over time. Honest. But yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, Stern is just so flexible. And fast. So fast. Like, Omega, Omega's dealing maybe two damage a turn cycle, and it's slow. <laughs> yeah. One of which is unblockable. I think it's a big ask for either of these cards. They're just um they they only ever do this one thing they say they do, right? Whereas uh, Stern just he helps so many different things. He helps your whole board attack through. He removes things. He's just annoying as a character by himself. He's a monster removal. Yeah, I, I, and, and he does it over multiple turns, multiple times, and it's yeah, dependable. You, Stern Leonis reminds me of Yuri. Yeah, but it's just when. like easier to activate. 
Oh, for sure. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah, back yeah, yeah, back yeah. then, like, Yuri felt like he got a million activations, right. and he, he just nuked your opponent's board, he drew cards, he dull froze everything. And you very and much were like, sitting there like, well, he's just going to do this six times, and I have to deal with it. Yeah. Exactly, And but it was like, it was mono wind. Mm-hmm. Like, there was a deck that did this. Sterling Leonis <laughs> goes in every deck. There's no restrictions. Like, you just want to play forwards, and then he makes them cheaper, too. Like, he's the payoff and the enabler. Like, watch out for cards that are payoffs and enablers. They're always fucked up. Um, and he, he works with everything. Like most of the cards that are like this tend to be tribal in some way or have weird restrictions. He has none. Yeah. They just took Uh, the brakes off of him. And I, um, that's going to be an interesting one to see how much it saturates the meta. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how much his presence warps the meta too, just cause like, I mean, there are already answers. You can play whatever Fenrir you want, Mm -hmm. uh, to kill Stern Leonis. You can, um, you know he's not he doesn't have great protection outside of the the plusing. Right, he's just uh, you know he's got just an insane <laughs> insane ability. Basically, if he doesn't die, you're gonna lose yeah. uh, a lot of the time. But um, it'll be interesting to see how much you know. Do we see the new six cost Leviathan that can put a light or a dark card on the top or bottom of its owner's deck? Do we see more Fenrir's flying around? Mm-hmm. Um, is Menphilia the 6 CP one that breaks light and dark cards, is that going to see play? Like, are, is the Aerith that breaks dark cards or the Cloud backup mm-hmm. that breaks dark cards, like, are they going to start seeing play? Um, I could see this. It's that powerful. I've not seen a single game where he touches the board where the the game is not irrevocably changed by mm-hmm. his presence. Um, yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's certainly the story of Opus 14 so far, I think. Yeah, for sure. Speaking so, of, that's uh, that's the whole set there, man. That's the whole set. Any closing thoughts on Opus 14? That's all I've got. I mean, it's very exciting. I'm I'm really ready to get into it. Um, I think it's a little bit weird that the primals are, seem like the focus of the set, the dual element cards, are the afterthought when this was the last in like the set of dual element sets. Um, but you know what? I think that we were overdue for a shakeup back towards mono element strategies. So I really like that. It's uh, the, I think the primals are great. I think that people have a lot of decks to explore. And there's something for everybody. Yeah, for sure. And I think that uh, similar to the last set, I think you've got a lot of new decks that are going to come out of this set. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that we got the finisher for Firewater Knights. We got uh, some of the setup for what the Avalanche Operative deck is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the self damage deck got uh, some different elements to it. I think monster decks got a little bit more interesting, weirdly enough. Um, yeah, there's a new version of Samurais, Monks, Dragoons, and there's now new versions of Mono Fire, Mono Lightning, Mono Wind, Mono Water, <laughs> Mono Earth. Um, we just got better. Yeah. We got, like, um, just a lot of really unique effects, too. Like, yeah. I, I love this new commitment that they made to four CP backups with unique effects mm-hmm. instead of it all being, like, 4 CP, you draw a card, or you search for a thing, you know? Like, most of the backups for a while were just, like, searchers. Yeah. Or or value cards in one way or another. Now we've got weirdos like Ultimecia or, um, what's his Lose name? Off. Lose Off. Yeah. I love you know, those, those kinds of cards. Of so I, I think that those are, um, it's an interesting design space, too. Since you're limited on the backup slots, it's really more just decision points. So, and I'm exactly. excited. 100%. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, reminder, you can check out the RVA Returners Locals uh, every week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, correct? Yep. Um, you can see that on twitch.tv slash RVA Snugsy. Yes, sir. And a uh, reminder, you can get in touch with this show at DeepListensPod on Twitter, DeepListens.Libson.com. We have our comment sections and DeepListensPodcast at gmail.com. And support the show on Patreon.com slash DeepListens. All right. Thank you so much, John. Hope of course. We Thanks do this for having again. me. Oh, yes. Hope this game keeps raging on. I hope so, too. <laughs> all right. See you all later. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs>